I wait for a while, na exit ug kalit. Hi, good, uh, good evening once again. We are here again. Our topic this evening will be all about uh, police intelligence and secret service. So the following, the following are the scope of the discussion. This is based on the table of specification or TUS set by the uh, Board of Criminology. So we have the following scope. First, the nature and history of intelligence and their contributions. Uh, the second is police intelligence cycle. Uh, nature of police intelligence operations, procedures and processes in intelligence operations. Importance, principles and components of national uh, security. So as you observe, uh, there is really uh, changes of the indicated topics uh, wherein it is already based on the table of specification. All right, let's proceed with our uh, proper uh, discussion proper. All right, we have the historical background. So the historical background will be focusing more on the biblical perspective and of course the personalities and their uh, country uh, visions. So before we'll start with the main topic, let us have Mona this uh, recess. If you know your enemy, and by knowing your personality, your character, but it simply means, or actually talking about uh, how prepared you are in, te in terms of your capabilities, and your strength, okay, and or your weakness. And also by knowing the weakness, capabilities, and the strength of your enemy. So therefore, you need not fear the result of a hundred battle since you know what you are dealing with. You know what, who you are facing with, and of course, the capacity, the strength, and the numbers of your enemy. And the second one is, uh, if you know your enemy, uh, if you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory you will suffer defeat. It's, it only means you just know your capabilities, your strength, and your uh, weakness. But without bothering for knowing the capabilities and the strength or weakness of your enemy. So what will happen then, though you have achieved the victory in every battle, but still you will suffer defeat. Since it's still puzzling in your mind and it's still really uh, hovering in your mind that what are really the strength and capabilities of your enemy. It might be uh, the, uh, the winning, uh, winning moment and or the victory of your troops might be due to some luck and or some uh, or the ad is favoring to you. And the third one is, if you know neither yourself at the enemy, you are filled with defeat in every battle. So it means that you really did not bother to know your strength, your capabilities, and weakness much more without knowing the capabilities and the strength and the weakness of your enemy. So what will happen then? Right? You're just only sacrificing your time, your resources. Okay? Uh, of course, uh, what will happen then? So your troop will be put into risk and or danger and everything will end up with nothing. So... These are actually coming from the, uh, the notation of the art of war uh, by Sun Chu. Okay, so let's start with the historical, uh, historical background in the biblical perspective. Okay, In the Holy Bible, it is where one of the formalized intelligence efforts was first recorded. Uh, more particularly, or to be specific, with the Numbers chapter 13, verse 17, wherein uh, everything is being stated there, most especially uh, in the person or in the image of Moses. Okay. So let's proceed with this personality. Uh, personality. 
So we have in person of Moses, wherein it is one of the first recorded formalized intelligence efforts during his time where the format can be found in the Holy Bible as stated in this particular uh, verse of the Bible. Wherein during the time of Moses, his contribution is that he uses 12 intelligence agents. Actually, these 12 intelligence agents, this particularly referring to the 12 disciples of God, to whom the Lord directed Moses to send into the land of Canaan and records that all those men were heads of the children of Israel. Uh, the very purpose of sending the 12 intelligence agents or the 12 disciples to the land of the Canaan is in order to gather pertinent data as to the current situation, as to the current dwellings of the brothers and sisters of Moses, in order for them to initiate of what would be the course of action that they are going to take in order to let out their brothers and sisters from the tyranny uh, form of uh, rule uh, made by a particular uh, king or person during that time. And next one, okay, who was she? Based or stated under Joshua chapter 2, verse, chap, uh, verse 1 to 21 of the Bible states about a woman believed to be the harlot of Jericho that sheltered and concealed the agents of Israel. What do you think is the answer for this class? I know you know the answer, but I want your response. Laila, sir. Rahab, sir. Laila, sir. Rahab, sir. Okay, the answer Rahab, is Rahab. Okay. Be reminded that Rahab and Delilah somewhat alike as to the as to how they use their femininity in terms of gathering and or extracting of information uh, coming from the enemy forces. But on the perspective of Rahab, Rahab really, she's not more into or not directly engaged as to gathering and or extracting of data and or information. But what she did is that he just only concealed the agents of Israel. She made covenant or she sheltered those uh, enemy agent of Israel in order that this particular agent, uh, agent of Israel will be able to penetrate uh, their area or their state for that matter. While on the other hand, uh, Delilah, uh, we will be discussing Delilah later on. Okay? So, yung contribution ni Rahab, Rahab considered to be the harlot. Kung sinabi natin harlot, iprosti, iprostitute, wherein selling flesh, using her body, okay, in order to gain uh, a monetary gain for that matter. Now, wherein she made a covenant with the agents and duped their pursuers. So what is the arrangement there between Rahab and the agent of Israel? The arrangement there is that the agent of Israel wanted Rahab to help them to be, uh, uh, to be concealed or to be sheltered in the house or area of Rahab. In return to that, the family of Rahab will be free from any form of killings or will be free from any violence. And Rahab's family will be freed and will not be ruled by the agent of Israel. So that is the arrangement. Pagtabangan lang ni ang agent, ang buhato lang ni Rahab is taguan sila para lang i-capture ang city nilang Rahab. In return to that, the family of Rahab will be free from any form of killing and or uh, violence to be committed by this uh, uh, Israelites agent. So uh, this also, who was she? She was an impromptu intelligence agent of the Philistines. She allowed Philistine spies to hide in her house where she engaged in the actual sexual intercourse for the very purpose of gathering and or extracting data from the powerful enemy. What do you think? Who, who do you think she, she was? Delilah. Delilah. Delilah, sir. Delilah. Okay, so basically, she's now Delilah because a while back, si Rahab to, so Delilah. So Delilah actually was the lover of Samson wherein uh, the very purpose why this enemy is actually uh, sheltering to the ill refute or the place of uh, Delilah is just because they wanted really to corner Samson. They wanted to know from Delilah of what uh, Samson's strength. So that is why uh, they wanted to cooperate with Delilah, to negotiate with Delilah, to divulge to them 
uh, the very reason or the very source of strength of Samson. So that is why uh, Delilah uh, any, uh, sana communicated with the enemy forces and that is the time he divulged to the enemy about the secret of strength of Samson. Diba? So the strength of or the source of strength of Samson was actually about the the long hair of Samson wherein he did not let somebody to cut it out because that is the only way of his communication with God. That is why as, during his time is still able to defeat his enemy and able to rule other state and or part of the areas kung asa dapat sila nga mag ruling. Okay, so again, the contribution of Delilah is that in terms of extraction and in terms of gathering of information from powerful enemy forces is that really she with the actual sexual intercourse in order to delight the enemy but in return secretly or discreetly uh, she actually getting information from the enemy. So be reminded that one of the asset of the law enforcement or the asset of the enemy forces by using uh, women and or female agent because by using the female agent uh, there lies the the weakness of the men and or the man diba pagbabayi na ang laro sa okay, so let's continue we also have this text and or the source of uh, strategy, tactics, and combat tactics on the part of those warriors during the time also of Sun Chu. Okay, we have the art of war. Okay, the art of war, this was the favorite readings of the late Mao Zedong and is a required reading material for the Chinese communist tacticians wherein also adapted by the Western countries just because this particular book, The Art of War, actually manifested with how a particular agent uh, or a particular intelligence officer able to defeat the enemy. Diba? So by means of this uh, tactical book, The Art of War, that would somehow be efficient and effective in terms of operation or in terms of war uh, during the time of uh, Sun Chu or during the ancient times. And of course, we have the author of the said book, Sun Chu, the one who wrote the book, The Art of War. But as I've looked into the history, as I've read the history pertaining to the art of war, uh, Sun Chu is just, is just a pseudonym being used by a particular author or writer of the book. Uh, the true name or the identity, or identity of the writer of a particular book, The Art of War, was not actually divulged or not being exposed in this particular uh, kanang reading material. So the Sun Chu is just a representation of a warrior and a river. Okay? So pag sinabing Sun, it represents the warrior and the Chu represent with the water. Uh, I, think, I think that is the order there or the Chu is the warrior or the Sun is the river. I really forgot kung asa sa duaan ni si water o si warrior but really the Sun Chu represent the warrior and the water or the river ang Sun Chu. So according to him, according to Sun Chu, uh, foreknowledge cannot be elicited from spirits or from gods or from analogy with past events nor from calculations. Because according to him, the foreknowledge is actually based on the actual experience, based on how the particular agent and or the intelligence officer working out in order to procure in order to gather and or obtain an information pertaining to the enemy forces. So meaning the spirit has nothing to do with this and the gods also has nothing to do with this as to the procurement of information na hindi na lang siya basta-bastang lumalabas coming from your head or coming from your thoughts. It actually coming from your actual experience and actual observation and actual engagement through gathering of information and or data. That is in according to Sun Chu. Next, we have Napoleon Bonaparte. So this actually, this person actually made his name known to the world since uh, due to the facts of his condition to the intelligence perspective or intelligence world, uh, most especially in the 
uh, spinach mission or spinach activity using spy as a main source of or as a main moving power in terms of gathering data and or in for mission. So manpower ang iyahang ginagamit dini. So during his time, spy against spy was of high proportion wherein counter spinach came into popular usage. So spy against spy. So ibig sabihin, he is using or utilizing the spy or the intelligence officer for that matter to spy against the spy of the enemy forces. This is what we call counter spionage, di ba? So the very purpose of this is that not only initiating or be utilizing this what we call a passive uh, spionage mission, but they actually engage in the spionage mission. So meaning they have the actual engagement in spying. So they tend to spy the they tend spying the spy of the enemy forces so that they would know the very thoughts, the movements and the activities of the enemy forces so that they will be able to prepare this, themselves of what would be the course of action to combat the possible offense of the enemy forces. So it, this is the contribution of Napoleon Bonaparte wherein the spy or spionage mission or activity is high of is of high great proportion during his time. And he also maintained military intelligence and secret political service. So ibig sabihin intelligence and secret political police service this actually looking into uh, the possible personalities who are assuming and who, who have a position in the politics in order to protect them or even to know the very thoughts of them of what would be their activities in in the vulnerabilities of the national security nga ilang ginaprotektahan so they also utilize this one so over europe he who believed that spy in the right place is worth 20000 men in the field so the very concept or the essence of the spy is that only one person conducting spionage mission or spionage activity is already worth 20,000 men in the field. So meaning to say, this actually discre uh, discreetly doing the spinach mission since a particular individual or agent or intelligence officer for that matter is uh, assuming another identity or fictional biographical data in order that the uh, true identity of the agent or intelligence officer for that matter will not be divulged and exposed to the enemy Forces. So this is the very thought of the spy, uh, spy one man lamang, which is worth 20,000 men in the field. Next is we have, and during the time of Napoleon Bonaparte, he actually utilizes and created the Bureau, two bureaus, the Bureau of Intelligence and the Topographic Bureau. What is the difference between the Bureau of Intelligence at the Topographic Bureau? In the Bureau of Intelligence, it is more focusing on consolidating, collating and collecting and collating all the information and data pertaining to the enemy forces and or pertaining to the friendly forces that might be of usage for their future operation and or current situation that they are facing with. So regarding the enemy for presentation to the emperor and to obtain information as desired. So as much as possible before the information will get to the hand of the emperor, it should go first or should be filtered first under the Bureau of Intelligence because the Bureau of Intelligence, same with the perspective of, uh, later on we'll be discussing that, uh, Bureau of Intelligence wherein they are more on consolidating all the information right after collection and collating that will be subject for evaluation, analysis, and interpretation. Evaluation, analysis, and interpretation were different three things. So evaluation as to the reliability, uh, uh, reliability of sources of information, the credibility, and of course, the sources of information. And also the, the analysis and interpretation. Next to second bureau is the topographic bureau. If the Bureau of Intelligence is more concerned with the collection of information and or data, here it comes the topographic bureau really is more concerned with the map or the, the, the characteristics of a map. Okay, 
It maintains large map which covers the latest information regarding both enemy and friendly forces. So what are their concerns under the Topographic Bureau? The very concern of the Topographic Bureau is that they are more on studying the, uh, the, studying the type of the terrain, okay? the characteristics of the area of operation that they are going to deal with in the near, uh, in the near future or in the future operation so that they would know really the entrance, the exits, and they would know also the friendly forces to whom they are going to ask for a help whenever they needed the help in terms of their operation when they will be in vulnerable situation. And also determining the terrain or as to the location, as to the perspective location of the enemy forces so that they would know that this particular location is not only one enemy. Ibig sabihin, meron din namang other enemy which is the enemy of your enemy. Di ba? So ibig sabihin, there are now numerous enemies which actually they are enemy all together against each other. Di ba? So parang ganun. Or else, they are the allied enemies of your enemy. So that is, very, uh, that is the very concept of the topographic bureau studying more the characteristics and the very nature of the terrain that they are going to deal with in the future operation before they will embark with the actual operation so that they will not be able to sacrifice their, their men, their troops, and their resources for that matter. So let's proceed with the other personality. So who do you think he was? He was the Bonaparte's head of internal security that created a network of agents, a French statesman, and is known as the father of modern political spinach. Who do you think was he, class? Frederick the Great, sir. Frederick the Are you sure? Okay. Frederick the Great? Recall. Okay, the, the answer, answer is, is Joseph. Joseph Pouch. So, okay, the answer is Joseph Pouch. Yeah. Be reminded, class, ha? merong tatlong agent or generals or personnel si, uh, ano, si Napoleon Bonaparte. Bonaparte. Yung, yung dalawa later on will be discussing that. Be reminded, silang tatlo is under sa administration or pamamalaka ni Napoleon Bonaparte. Now we're in, they are actually engaging to the field of work or intelligence world, uh, inter intelligence work in the field. So Joseph Fouch, anong sabi dito? He was the father of modern political spinach. Bakit nga ba modern political spinach? Okay, we'll get to know that. So we're in, he actually, he is the one who, who utilizes or even created this what we call counter espionage. Because before, there was no call this counter espionage before the time of the uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. But because during the time of Napoleon Bonaparte and the men of Napoleon Bonaparte were really intelligent and brilliant enough to actually come up with the formulation of system and of formulation of procedures and processes as to how are they going to initiate the operation with not more on defensive stat, but actually on the other perspective is they will look into on the offensive stat. Diba? Pag sinabing offensive, they will directly engage in the spinach mission actively and actually. Okay? So counter spinach, ano nga ba tong counter spinach? Okay. It was actually developed as a modern system of spying on spies through creation and network of agent. So during that, uh, under the administration also of Joseph Fouch, which is for the spinach mission in creating the network of agent, this is one of his contribution under the administration of Napoleon network of agent. Pag sinabi natin network of agent, it composed of different departments, different units of one organization who are actually, I mean, which is actually as to do an assigned task in each and every uh, perspective or aspect of their operation. For administrative, for intelligence gathering, for topographic purposes. So those are the division of works under the uh, time of Joseph Fouch under the administration of Napoleon Bonaparte in which he created the network of agents. The network of agents will actually be subdivided into different groups in order to conduct or to be engaged in actual operation or engage in actual espionage mission. So ipadala nila sa lalahay nga lugar and then they are going to collate all together the information and data gathered coming from different places of concern. Okay. So next, who was he? 
he was regarded as the greatest strategist. Kung kanina, okay, si, si Joseph Fouch as the one who created the network of agents, sino naman to? Greatest strategist uh, uh, by the party that developed an effective intelligence system in Rome who garnered the first-hand information. Sa inyong answer? Carl Schulmeister. Carl Schulmeister? Are you sure? Carl Schulmeister? Or Carl Schulmeister? The answer is Hannibal Barca. Okay. Medyo nawala tayo sa passing just because of the term being inserted and being used. Actually, this is, uh, this was the, the title being uh, given to Hannibal Barca as the greatest strategist of Napoleon Bonaparte. So yung nakaugalian nyo is uh, developing effective intelligence system for 15 years, di ba? Uh, this guy's himself as a bigger. So yun yung nakaugalian nyo kay Hannibal Barca, di ba? So yung nakaugalian natin is Hannibal lang, walang apelido na Barca. Actually, the full name of Hannibal Barca, Hannibal is Hannibal Barca. Okay, so Hannibal Barca was actually the Carthaginian general considered as one of the brilliant military strategists. So as you observe, Hannibal Barca is the second greatest man or one of the greatest men of Napoleon Bonaparte next to Joseph Fouch. Kapag si Joseph Fouch is more on monitoring and supervising the network of agents, ito naman si Hannibal Barca is the one who handling the number of troops as the general. Okay? Na we're in considered to be the strategist in terms of operation, in, in terms of war, di ba? in terms of gathering of data information, which who actually handling personnel as well. Okay? So, and wherein he developed uh, an effective intelligence system for 15 years in Rome. Okay? So within 15 years, why? Nga ano ka? Nga effective intelligence system ang iya for 15 years, very effective just because of this approach. Okay, what approach is this? Is that this guy himself as a big guard to gather first-hand information. Ibig sabihin, he himself actually engaged in the uh, gathering of information in the field where he disguised himself as a big guard. So as a big guard, that is, uh, that is actually assuming fictitious identity. A fictitious biographical data in order to cover up himself from the true identity in order to what get away from the eyes of the enemy to be identified as the general or to be identified as uh, one of the agent. So that is his contribution. So he was regarded as the greatest strategist by Napoleon Bonaparte. Again, question, who was, reg uh, who was the one who created the network of agent? Joseph Hello? Fouch. Hi, Joseph Fouch. And how, who about, how about greatest strategies of Napoleon Bonaparte? Hannibal Barca, sir. Okay, murag si Hango, rin di, diri ako ang kauban. Okay, kami ramang doon kay si Sturia. Okay, Hannibal Barca. Uh -huh. So I know you know the answer, but I want you to interact with me so that your mind and your brain will working out para di ta mag-stagger din. Okay, how about this one? He was regarded as Napoleon's eye and also acted as a general in Napoleon's army under Charles Schulmeister. Huh? Charles. Okay. Thank you. The answer is Charles Schulmeister. Okay? And was appointed commissioner of police for Vienna during Napoleon's second occupation in 1809. So, kung yung makita si Joseph Fouch uh, created and supervising the network of agent. Si Hannibal Barca naman is a general who are considered to be the greatest strategist and engaged actual mission in gathering of information. While si Carl School Mister is more on spinach mission. Okay? Ang iya is spying. Okay? Getting more on the thoughts of the enemy, getting more on what would be the current activities of the enemies, yun ang kanyang ginagawa, infiltrating the enemy. Okay? While yung kang Hannibal Barca is more on engaging sa actual gathering of data, not more on espionage mission, but more on uh, offensive type as to giving aid to what is desired for their operation. Yeah? So the, the purpose of engaging to espionage mission on the part of school mister 
it is more on developing of what would be their adjustments in terms of protecting their personnel, in terms of protecting their assets, protecting the information, and protecting their materials and installation. Okay. So he is actually in Napoleon's military secret service and Napoleon's eye. So he began his career in offensive spinach. Under a cover role, he was able to infiltrate the Austrian general staff and study the characters of the generals. So as you observe, since Karl Skolmister is considered to be the general of Napoleon's army, the same with Hannibal Barca, kanyang makita, unsa ang yung gi-engage, gi-infiltrate nga organization is the Austrian general staff and also uh, the generals. Not only the Austrian general, but also the generals of the general staff of the Austria or Austrian. Nga nung sila ka ang yung puntiria just because he knows very well, he knew very well the very nature of the army. He knew very well the order of the battle of the army, the plans, the procedures, and the processes as to how the armies working out, di ba? not only in the uh, land armies, but also in the fluvial and aerial armies. So mo na yung pinaka purpose mo, yung gi-infiltrate or gina-penetrate just because also it conforming to the very nature of the job of Karl Skolmister as the general of Napoleon's army. Okay. So next is he was a spy for the Austrian Empire and the Holy Alliance but was recruited by General Savary to spy for uh, France. So actually this uh, personnel or this uh, uh, kind of department, uh, other unit of the organization uh, where he was into is actually uh, taking him also for the purpose of doing such spinach mission just because of her, uh, his rather, just because of his uh, getting expertise as to conducting spinach mission. So next is he was an Austrian double agent for France during the reign, reign of Napoleon I. So because of this, his information led to the French capture of Louis Antoine Henry de Bourbon and also contributed to the victory of Austerlitz. So that is the contribution of Karl Skolmister. So how about this one? He was considered to be the father of organized military spinach. Who was he, guys? Frederick the Great. Frederick the Great. Frederick right, the Great. Thank you for that response. The answer is, sorry, the answer would be Frederick the Great. So during the time of, why he considered to be the father of organized military spinach? Because during his time, he actually devises or devised the four classes of agents and or the spies. That is why he was regarded as the father of organized military spinach. And since he re, uh, created the four classes of agents and or spies, we should tackle these things up. First, we have the common spies. Common spies in Uto. Okay, recruited among poor folk, glad to earn small sum to or to accommodate a military officer. So, pag sinabi natin uh, common spies, there are those uh, common individual and or citizen in a particular place or area were indeed glad to earn even a small amount of money just to have uh, just to have to to actually uh, have their livings and for their also for their needs or their basic needs. So meaning to say there are those mga common individual in the uh, rural areas which actually easy to be recruited, to be used as one of the spies in carrying out the mission. Next, we have double spies. So anong konsepto ng double spies? So actually, the double spies are relying more on informers were actually engaging in spreading false information, okay? So pag sinabi natin false information, they tries to mislead or to misinform the enemy so that the enemy would not able to have a, an idea as to what would be their very thoughts, what would be the re real uh, action or operation nga ginabuhat sa iyang agency. So that actually trying to impede and block the enemy forces by using the by using the false information or spreading a false information towards the enemy. And the 
third spy is spies of consequences. Anong kay ba ng spy of consequences from the previous two spies? The spies of consequences actually having a notable position. Oh, these are those noble individual in the community or society which holding a position in the community, okay? With, and wanted to be bribed or in return to their service is a money or consideration if they wanted really to be involved in this spy or agent or to be part of the agent for spinach mission, okay? So again, they, they hold a position in the community. Next, persons. Of course, persons who are forced to undertake spinach against their will. So mostly they, they are, these are those neutral individual, but they don't have option or they don't have opportunity to de deny because they are, were actually forced to undertake spinach mission in favor to Frederick the Great's administration. So this is the contribution of Frederick the Great, considered to be or regarded to be the father of organized military espionage. Okay, let's proceed here. This person was Julius Caesar. What was then the contribution during the time of Julius Caesar? During the time of Julius Caesar, he was actually considered to be one of the most influential political and military leaders in history. Why political? Just because he is one of the advisors or even give his thoughts as to what would be the development, what would be the course of action to take in order to develop their state or to develop his road uh, place and or area. So, and help establish the vast empire ruled by Rome. Rome rather. So Caesar's triumph in a civil war in the 40s before Christ made him the absolute ruler of Rome, but political jealousies among his opponents motivated them to assassinate him. So due to the fact of his brilliancy and due to the fact of his contribution and brave enough and being bold as during his administration on how he ruled a particular place and he managed things to lead the way as to uh, ruling other areas, uh, it somehow motivated the opponents and or the uh, actually, yaning mga ka constituents, but due to the jealousies of the constituents, is ning, uh, ning bali sa iya because they wanted also the position of Julius Caesar. So during his time, he devised this what we call speculators. So sino to mga speculators? The speculators were actually serves as information collecting agency. So ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, which is under the time of uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, na this is equivalent to uh, Bureau of Intelligence kay Napo Napoleon Bonaparte. Yun nga lang dito sa Kang Julius Caesar speculators na kung saan serves as information collecting agency which has same manner, same nature, and same characteristics and perspective with the Bureau of Intelligence kay Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay? And they devised this what we call communication system. So the communication system, this actually aided the military success of the Romans. So what are the things under the communication system? Meron silang dalawa, the carrier pigeon or the carrier pigeons and the ciphers. Pag sinabi natin carrier pigeons, this is actually in the, in the context of a bird, di ba? Actual bird, not a imaginary bird. The carrier pigeons were actually... Uh, the moving force in terms of transferring, transporting, and disseminating an intelligence report or an information pertaining to what they have gathered as to spionage mission and or gathering of data by means of actual engagement in the field. So ipadala nila, ilaran ng ibutang sa uh, pigeon para ipalupad and then the pigeon will actually go to the place where it was ordered to, to go to. Okay? So that made possible the amazing speed with which intelligence of Imperial Rome was transmitted. Why? Because during this time, wala pa namang uh, technological form of transportation. Kagaya ngayon na we have the, the vehicles uh, by with the aid of the machine and or the, yes, with the aid of the machine. Yung uh, during his time is actually wala pa mga ganun. So it takes months diba, to travel to the other camps or to the other place just only to give or to in hand the information that they have gathered pertaining to the enemy forces. 
but with the aid of that carrier pigeon, we will be they able to uh, transmit the desired information or gathered intelligence pertaining to the enemy forces with the due time or uh, with the amazing speed of uh, time. Next is the ciphers. Ano naman tong ciphers? This is to ensure secrecy of communication. So pag sinabi nating cipher, this is in a form of an intelligence text or in a form of an intelligence words and or phrases. Ibig sabihin, yes, you can see that this uh, the, there are words, there are numbers, but you could not actually understand what are those means. Okay, that is what we mean for ciphers. In a presentation of an intelligence. Pag sinabing an intelligence text, an intelligence uh, words and or phrases, that is in a form of codes, di ba? Hindi maintindihan. So that is what we mean for an intelligence text or an intelligence uh, phrases being utilized in the ciphers or in the cipher method. So ano yung opposite ng cipher? In order to solve is decipher, di ba? So the very purpose of cipher method is to maintain or ensure the secrecy of communication. This is the reason why, di ba? This is the reason why this was the reason why during the time of Julius Caesar, why they need really to have this ciphering of communication and or letters just because they already have the information and or the data that there are growing uh, jealousies and or uh, uh, motivating the enemies or opponents of him to really dethrone him from the position he had during that time or during his time. To proceed with, we have this personality also. Okay, who was he? He was the first to devise the letter sorting and opening to obtain information. Class, who was Alexander he? Alexander the Great, sir. Okay, thank you for that response. The answer was Alexander the Great. So, kung inyong makita is that digto kang, uh, digto kang, ano, kang Julius Caesar, kung basig malibog mo, di ba? Ang yan dito is ciphering lang sa letters and or communication. Dito, uh, communication system yung sa kanya. The same with Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great is more concerned also with the communication system as well. Because he actually come up with devising the letter sorting as to opening to obtain the information. So the very thought there is that this is to avoid uh, the compromisation of the possible information that is about to go out or going in the camps, all right? So during this time, they investigated all the letters and the detection of the malcontents whether the legitimate cause were exposed. Meaning to say, before the information or the letter will, will come out in their camps, they should determine first, uh, evaluate first if the legitimate cause or the legitimate purpose of the content of the information were exposed because otherwise, if on their part, they evaluated that the legitimate purpose or cause of the content of the information were exposed, they need to uh, actually initiate this what we call ciphering method. Because as such, if this will be exposed, that is the time that their operation or their activities and their plans might be exposed to the enemy forces. The hints and rumors of that, this affliction growing among his allies. So just because how they did know uh, the, the, this affliction growing, growing among his allies just because of this letter sorting. That is why nga yan device in order to know the very thoughts of his allies if his allies still in accordance or in conformity with his uh, administration or not anymore. Diba? So that is the very purpose or thought of the letter sorting. So he sought the truth and got it by simplest expedition. So same manner with uh, Kanang Julius Caesar, uh, they actually being dethroned of the position just because of the disaffection on the part of Alexander the Great is disaffection. Parang nawala na yung mga uh, loob ng kanyang allies para sa iya. Same what with uh, Julius Caesar. So talagang medyo magkapariyo sila ng perspective and or approach as to the contribution. Letter sorting kay Alexander the Great while kang Julius Caesar is more on communication system in terms of carrier pigeons and uh, ciphers method or ciphering method. Okay, let's proceed with these following personalities. Kung inyong makita diyan na ay mga pariyarag naong 
Well, actually, I don't have, well, I don't even procure their real images. So I don't think so. Kato ko nang nakita is mga images to nila. So that is why I am using this uh, image only to represent, di ba? Or just only to put an image to represent the contribution of these following personalities. Okay, so we have this. So you cannot read this because ngon ana lang yung concept. But let's proceed. This perspective on the part of Genghis Khan. Uh -oh, He actually used the prisoners. One of his contributions during his time, he uses the prisoners as a source of information. Now, wherein this is very evident and very uh, observable nowadays, because our law enforcement agencies and the law in, and the intelligence officers and agencies, for that matter, were actually using and utilizing this type or approach of gathering data na kung saan ginagamit nila ang prisoners as a source of information. Na kumbaga, as a general perspective, they falls under the what? Asan siya nga type of kanang source of information? Regular underworld. source, grapevine source, underworld. or underworld? Underworld. Underworld. Diba? underworld. What is the other term for that? Grapevine. Diba? So yung pangatlo is cultivated. So yung grapevine source, kasali na doon si Underworld. Underworld in the perspective of uh, prisoners, criminals, and of course uh, the, ano, uh, the, the ex-convicts. So nga nung gigamit ang prisoners during sa time of Genghis Khan, actually Genghis Khan is very intelligent type of uh, kaning general na wherein he uses really the prisoners because the prisoners has a direct contact knew already who are the persons involved in this particular criminal activities and also subversive organization and what might be the move and the activities, possible activities of the enemy forces that they are going to deal with. So mauna ang yang contribution during his time as he actually conquered China and invade Kathi. So Genghis Khan, leader of the so-called Mongol conquerors and used effective propaganda by spreading rumors of Mongol terror during his time. So, murag yun ang gapos siya o kining terror uh, terror terror mindset with the enemy and or deterrent to the enemy just because of the approach and the type of characteristic he possessed as a leader or a general during his time. So, next to him, we have Akbar. So, Akbar considered to be the great Mughal of India. So, a master of Hindustan. So, unsa ang iahadri? Ang iahadri is that he employed more than 4,000 agents for the sole purpose of bringing him the truth that his throne might raise upon him. So ibig sabihin, everything really relies on the agents as to providing him with the information and all the data. So unsa ang nasa iahani nga time? In order to win the heart and the trust of the people nga iyang gipamunuan, he actually abolished the sectarian tax on the non-Muslims. This is for the very purpose of winning the heart of these people that actually helping him out to give information, provide an information and or data pertaining to the enemy forces, the movement and the activities of the enemy forces against his administration and or uh, during sa iyahanga time. Wherein these people actually uh, appointing him or appointing them into the high civil and military post. So para bang at the very stage or start sa iyahang pagwin sa heart, yung giabolish ang sectarian tax. Pag sinabing sectarian tax, ito yung uh, tax that could be collected uh, by the government, di ba? By, from those people na iyang gipamunuan. Uh, from that very stage nga iyang first move is that yada yung silang gibutang sa high civil position or military post because these people were, will, were actually his asset or was his asset to gather data and information. From the beginning, he already won the heart of them and for the second time around, putting them in the civil and military post for the purpose of gaining information for the sole purpose of security of their uh, state and or nation. Next, we have General William Dunovan. Sino nga ba tong tao to? Actually, General William Dunovan is one of the notable personalities in the CIA. Di ba? Na kung saan, During his time, this is the birth of the CIA, where it actually started in the name of the OSS, okay, or the Strategic Service uh, Office of Strategic Service or OSS. So, 
a precursor to the Central Intelligence Agency during the World War II. Actually, before the Central Intelligence Agency become its uh, name today, the CIA, dagan pa yung yagi yan, OSS, uh, OSS, OSG, di ba? SSE, so dagan pa yung yagi pangagyan before siya nga nahimo officially as Central Intelligence Agency. So this was actually created during the World War II for the sole purpose of bringing or gathering data and or intelligence report pertaining to enemy forces in order for them to initiate defensive and offensive uh, activities and or stat against the enemy. Di ba? So maoni ang battle of intelligence during this time, the World War I and the World War II. Because during also in the World War I, uh, when the highest peak of kining one, kining World War, is this is this was during the the war between the Great Britain and the uh, sa gitong rival sa kanang Great Britain, Great Britain and hello, what is the who is the rival country of the Great Britain? Gani? Germany. Okay, Germany, di ba? During sa ilang time. World War One, wherein intelligence effort and intelligence system is high, is of high great value and of high great uh, usage. Na kung saan it is a battle of machine, the need to penetrate the very thoughts and the very strategy of the enemy. Kasi kung matatandaan nyo, the Germany they have this so-called great enigma or enigma. Uh, Great machine, not great enigma, because enigma is a great term. Uh, is a term referring to great. Okay, enigma machine or great machine. Na kung saan they actually utilizing it, using it by means of uh, hiding the true text or intelligence text, making it into an intelligence. So coded siya. Na kung saan during sa time also ani eh, on the part of the uh, Great Britain, they actually on the perspective of kanang developing a machine in order to combat the enigma machine of the Germany. So, kung inyong madumduman, I do not know if you could still remember during sa inyong college pa if if you could still remember my discussion about the Alan Turing machine, di ba? The Alan Alan Turing machine, it was Alan Turing, okay? Alan Turing who actually uh, discovered uh, I mean invented the Turing machine. The Turing machine or also known as the old build, building or code zero 0.041 if i'm not mistaken of, or if i could still remember that okay saya nga time siya ang naka-invent ana in order to combat combat rather the enigma machine of the germany so just because of that they able to infiltrate the code of the next attack of the germany which is the west coast part of the great germany at uh, the great britain kung asa na sugod mubumba ang germany so they able to counterattack the bomb of the Germany. So wala na penetrate ang Germany just because of the successful, uh, successful uh, uh, invention of Alan Turing. So way back 2013, it was being uh, getting awarded with the Nobel Prize of Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II, iya nang awarded of Nobel Prize ang kining uh, kining Turing machine na gibuhat ni uh, Alan Turing. So more than 50 years haya pa nila gipagawas because they are actually the Great Britain actually anticipating for the third world war. So that is why wala pa na nila gi-expose right after the World War 2 because they are anticipating. But since there are no signs or threat anymore that the World War 3 will uh, uh, sprout or will emerge, so they decided to publicly announce it the the creation and the invention of the Turing machine in the name of Alan Turing, which was uh, which was uh, kining, uh, awarded with the Nobel Prize of Queen Elizabeth II. So if you want to validate that history as I've uh, kind of discussed now, you can search that history for the uh, Great Britain. So that is the contribution of General Donovan uh, in, the, uh, in part of the Central Intelligence Agency. So he is also known as the father of American intelligence and the father of central intelligence. Yes, because during his time, he was the one who created and devised the Central Intelligence Agency during the World War II. Be reminded that the Central Intelligence Agency is actually operating in a particular statute of the U.S. state, meaning to say 
they need to conform visions on particular law in order for them not to encroach the national security, the civil rights, and other rights for that matter. Because otherwise, they will be prosecuted accordingly whenever they will be apprehended by the law enforcement uh, personnel or agency. This is actually uh, different from the FBI because the very nature of the FBI is more on uh, public service or gover government service ang ilaha. So itong Central Intelligence is just only a kuan, supporting agency for providing information and or data pertaining to national security and for the security and for the sole purpose in aiding the, the government agencies of the U.S. or the United States for that matter. Next, we have Edward I. During the time of Edward, uh, Edward I, he was actually the king of England. He organized a systematic police system called Witch and Ward and by royal proclamation. So by royal proclamation, he create niyang state informer. Di ba? Na kung saan, each and every citizen in their country or state are responsible and obliged, therefore, to look after with the welfare of their society or community and to report thereto to the concerned agency. It was created, the state informer created in the 1734 in joining all informers to expose criminal activities and be compensated. So of course, uh, be comp uh, compensated because they will not be effective and efficient enough if there is no uh, return to the service that they have uh, rendered. Okay, moving on, we have Joseph Petrosino. Sino nga ba si Joseph Petrosino? He was a member of the New York Police Department in early 1900. So, and was the head of the Italian squad where during his time it is very notable that it, he was actually credited in smashing the Black Society. So pag sinabing Black Society, it does not literally mean referring to the Black people of the U.S. But it also uh, means or referring to the Black uh, activities or the illegal activities of uh, activities of the New York or the U.S. So most of the time, well, actually during this time, uh, racial discrimination is very rampant and most of the uh, assailant or most of the criminals as labeled by them were the black Americans or the black people. So it's somewhat like in has a connection with the term black society. But though they are not focusing on the black people, also they take consideration to the white people in smashing black society as it refers to illegal activities and illegal transactions made by the criminals, organized criminals for that matter. Next to Joseph Petrosino, an intelligence history okay, who, ha, who was a homosexual agent who happened to be a chief of the Austro-Hungarian Secret Service and committed suicide in 1913 as found guilty of treason for being I'll double agent of Russia. Huh? Kinsa class? Alfred Riedel. Okay, Alfred Riedel. Wait for a while up. Emma, sa kong tubig. Okay, Alfred Riedel. So, Later on, we would know ano kang namatay si Alfred Riddle. So be reminded, guilty of treason for being double agent of Russia. Class, be reminded the difference between the double agent and dual agent. Ha? Magkaiba yun. Do not put into the perspective the dual agent in the perspective wherein the agent is become traitor to his uh, allegiance or ally nga ka ng agency. Iba yung dual agent sa double agent. Okay? So later on, uh, okay, since we're talking about this, we'll talk na lang muna sa double, the difference between the double agent at saka dual agent. Pag sinabing double agent, somewhat like you are not loyal enough with the agency you are working with, meaning you are also working with the other agency or the criminal organization na wherein you are both gaining information and exchanging information para sa to aid sa ilang dua. Para bang pinag-away mo sila in order only in favor sa imo with the considerations di ba yun yung ang double agent but yung dual agent you are working with your uh, agency 
in which you are uh, actually employed and also you are working with the allied agency or liaison agency which is the the intelligence agency also yun yung tinatawag nating dual agent magkaiba yung dual at saka double agent dual agent you are somewhat or you are partly uh kining breaching the allegiance to your original uh kining agency in which you also in favoring to the criminal uh kining organization but in the dual is both friendly forces yon or friendly intelligence agency na kung saan that is to aid them with the desired information that they wanted to uh, excuse for a while Okay, let's continue. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, he was Alfred Riedel. No way in his treason led to the death. Okay, can you imagine? Led to the death of 5,000 agents and soldiers combined in his 13 years espionage mission. So can you imagine within 13 years, it seems like oh, parang tinatry do niya yung uh, agency wherein he working with. Diba? So that is the contribution of uh, Alfred Wedel. So parang yung ano uh, the image of Alfred Wedel somewhat like uh, adunay negative, di ba? Adunay negative notion. But looking into the positive side, as you could see really, the contribution is that how he is working out effectively and efficiently as being or by being a double agent. So meaning to say, he is very effective enough in terms of working with the legitimate agency that he's working with and also with the uh, criminal organization or other organization which is a subversive organization uh, in, in, in contrary with the organization ngayang gitrabahuan. So as you observe, very effective yung means and or uh, strategy niya to become a double agent. Diba? Within 13 years, that is so much number of years in the service. All right, next, we have Brahma Kautilya. This is the last one in the center man. Brahma Kautilya. So what is the contribution of Brahma Kautilya? So in ancient India, he overthrew the Nanda dynasty. Be reminded that his contribution is overthrowing the Nanda dynasty just because of the information, the data that we have gathered that they, they actually make use of that uh, against with the enemy uh, forces with this ty tyrant type of uh, administration, the Nanda dynasty. So he recommended to his king that for the ruler to succeed, the ruler should strike at his enemy's weakest points by means of spice. So ibig sabihin, yes, the enemy's strongest point is at the same time the enemy's weakest point. Okay. Why, why that is considered to be the enemy's strongest point? That is considered to be the enemy's strongest point since that is the main asset that the enemy should protect from any uh, subversive act of the enemy forces diba? or the rival forces. So meaning to say, if that is their very strength or kanang, uh, uh, kining, tawag na to, ana, a strongest point, that is also considered to be the weakest point. Because anytime, whenever that will be strike by the enemy, that could be the possible weakest point para nga ma put down ang ilang uh, administration or organization. So the Mayorian spy system has been initiated during this time which rivaled the modern Soviet and had the following tasks. So modern Soviet be reminded the KGB di ba? but this actually now operating under the name of the FSB. So muna na ang new name nila karon the FSB the Federal uh, Bureau of Intelligence, FSB. So the, the concept of the Mayoyan spy system is shadow the king's minister and officials and attempt to determine 
their very thoughts. So, ibig sabihin, they need to uh, kining infiltrate the king's minister so so that they would know really the thoughts as to their activities and the possible future operations. Report wrongdoings of the people. Operate secretly in foreign countries. So, this is offensive type uh, in terms of engaging in spinach mission. Spread unrest. So pag sinabing spread unrest, to yung mga rumors or false information. Commit acts of sabotage. So commit acts of sabotage, they are more on active measure. Assassinate political and military leaders who are actually exposing, divulging, and putting the vulnerability of the, uh, the security of the state or the security of their uh, nation. Political envoys are instructed to make friends with officials of the enemy to compare the military strengths with their own. So, mo na ang ilang pinaka kwan sa katapusan na kung saan they need to penetrate for them to know really what is going on, the processes, the procedures, and the system of the officials of the enemy. So that para makumpare nila sa ilaha kung mas strong ba ilaha or mas weak ang ilaha so that they would have the room for their improvement and development of their military systems. Okay, let's move on. Okay. okay, class, we will have five to eight minutes break before we'll proceed with the police intelligence cycle. So let us, let us have a break, Mona, for our personal necessity. Okay, we are now here at intellig uh, Police Intelligence Cycle or Intelligence Cycle. So be reminded that Intelligence Cycle really or Police Intelligence Cycle has a beginning and end. Or else uh, it, it only be cycling together from the first stage or first process up to the last process. So we'll be determining every stage so that we would know the Intelligence Cycle. Okay. In the perspective of intelligence cycle, it must first determine the crime and or the event. Okay? So the crime or event is very essential or very important factor in order to proceed with a series of steps and or stages so that the particular intelligence officer or intelligence agency would be able to come up with the usage and or proper dissemination and or of intelligence that had been uh, gathered. So the crime and or event must be determined first by the law enforcement uh, law enforcement agency. So ano ano to mga law enforcement agency? Samples we have the Philippine National Police, uh, the PDA, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the National uh, the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, we have National Bureau of Investigations and others. So the law enforcement agency would have to have an evaluation and feedback pertaining to the reported crime and or the event. Why? Because unang una, it would be the law enforcement agency to decide whether to continue or not to uh, continue the investigation as to gathering of data and information. Because a certain law enforcement agency would conduct first an evaluation pertaining to the initial data and or information that they have gathered initially. Ha, initially. So right after the evaluation, they will now give a feedback based on the data that they have evaluated initially whether to decide to continue or not to continue the investigation. Okay. So whenever the law enforcement personnel of a certain law enforcement agency identified and determined that the crime and or the event has existed, and this is a reasonable necessity to continue the possible gathering and of uh, data and or information pertaining to the crime or the event that occurred. Right after the evaluation and feedback, that is the time for the law enforcement agency to proceed with the planning and with the uh, direction. Okay. Wherein in the planning and direction, it is very important for them to identify this what we call PIR or the Priority Intelligence Report before it is being called as EEI or the Essential Elements of Information. So what are the things should be considered under the PIR or the EEI? So the things to be considered under which is that the commander of a troop or a commander of the organization or agency 
must look into the characteristics of the area of operation and the characteristics of the enemy so that they would know really what they are dealing with okay and of course before deciding before the uh, before the commander to decide to pursue such operation in terms of obtaining in terms of gathering in terms of collecting the information pertaining to the reported crime and or the event that is the time that they need really to study first the the existing situation as to the current domestic and foreign situations and also national uh, policies securities and status because as such whenever they will proceed with the accumulation or gathering of data and or information they might able to encroach some uh, rights or some uh, policies of the state that should be taken into consideration by them because otherwise they might be prosecuted by encroaching or by violating some of the provisions pertaining to the national security when they are not going to uphold the existing uh, special statute or the statute of the state pertaining to protecting the rights of individual or pertaining to the rights of the organization as to a uh, right of privacy or a statute pertaining to act of uh, depriving or the act of uh, envisioning to uh, privacy of information. So under which the planning and direction course they will conduct pre-surveillance conference. How important the pre-surveillance conference? Be reminded that the pre-surveillance conference really will be happening uh, through the concept of they are going to set together the commander and the troops and together with the concerned and authorized personnel on the conference room, what are they going to do is that they are to, going to talk things over pertaining to the about operation to conduct. So they are going to initiate the personal recognizance and artificial recognizance during the pre-surveillance conference. Pag sinabi kasi nating pre-surveillance conference, ito yung mga bagay na pinag-uusapan bago sila before they will conduct or embark to the actual operation or actual gathering of information. So ano naman to mga personal recognizance at saka artificial recognizance? Pag sinabi nating personal recognizance, they first conduct a pre-surveillance by letting the agent or the assigned intelligence officer to go to or to visit first, okay, to recon the area to the current situation of the target area or area of operation and the possible presence of the target, uh, the, the nature of the kining area as to the entrance and or the exits, okay. Pag sinabi naman, be reminded, pag sinabi yung personal recognizations, physical appearance, personal or actual uh, can engagement of an agent to conduct a pre-surveillance in order to have initial report. So initial report or initial situation sa ilang area of operation or target subject. Yung artificial recognizance na lang, na naman, it does not involve with actual engagement or actual or physical appearance to the area of operation. What is consider uh, being considered under the artificial recognizance is that it is more focusing on map recognizance, okay? Pag sinabing map recognizance, they are more on studying the terrain, the structure of the place, uh, the structure of the area of operation so that they would be able to come up with a prudence and or uh, fair judgment or thorough uh, judgment as to what would be their course of action whenever magkagiitan na, whenever nga magkaipitan na. As much as possible, they are going to determine the exit routes, the entrance routes, uh, the possible uh, kining, uh, place of kining, uh, place of kining, na, para mutakas ang imong enemy. Uh, so I'm talking about the exit, yes, exit point and the entrance point. And of course, the possible uh, areas of kining sabotage or possible areas of ambush. So that is the very purpose for the artificial or the map recognizance. More on terrain, more on the characteristics of the area. So if the terrain is more involved with the settlers or involved with the buildings or uh, business area, ba na siya nga type sa inyong area of operation, you should to take that into consideration so that you will be able to make a communication prior to the operation. And 
Under which also is verification of the target area, subject, possible resources. So those are the things that I've mentioned. Uh, the pre-surveillance uh, conference is very important for them so that they will be able to verify and validate the veracity of the prior, uh, I mean the information uh, gathered from the pre-surveillance before they will initiate the actual operation of gathering data and in information. And also in order for them to determine the possible uh, budget for the resources, the possible expenditures, so that uh, they will not be able to uh, hit with the shortages diba? and or the scarcities of the resources. Uh, right after the planning and direction and everything is clear uh, uh, during the pre-surveillance conference and the commander therefore has decided since they already studied also and reviewed the state policy, the state security, and the statute, and also the rights, and the procedures and plans to be considered by not encroaching uh, the existing rules and regulations and the policy of the state, that is the time for them to proceed with the stage two. The stage two, of course, talks about collection of information. Ano, ano nga ba ang nandito sa uh, ano, eh, <clears throat> collection of information okay in the collection of information there are a lot of things to be considered first before they will go through before they will go to with collecting information so they are going to determine first who are the collecting agencies okay of course pag sinabi natin collecting agencies it refers to governmental agencies it refers to uh, private organizations or it refers to intelligence agencies or intelligence organization for that matter. So by determining those agencies, concerned agency in collection of information, uh, the law enforcement agency intelligence unit might be able to channel and might be able to tap the, the liaison agencies for them to be helped out and for them to uh, resource the number of personnel to be used in terms of uh, getting collection of data information. And who are these collecting personnel or collecting individual? This collecting personnel or collecting individual, it refers, might be to informant and or the informer. Of course, intelligence officer and or the intelligence, uh, intelligence uh, officer for that matter. So by this, under which collection of information, they need to look into for information network. So pag sinabing information network, who are and what are available networks in order for them to be utilized and in order for them to extract an information and or data pertaining to the concerned crime and or event that existed. Okay? So by the information network, okay class, pag sinabi natin information network, it composed of different organizations, it composed of different agencies and or uh, individuals and or other sources might be the prime media. Okay? So under which we have the application of sources of information. We have here the regular source, the cultivated, and the grapevine source. So be reminded, pag sinabi kasi natin regular sources, it refers to non-governmental and or governmental. Uh, excuse for what? Okay, so I'm back. So regular sources, it, re, uh, it actually tackled the non-government and governmental agencies in which these particular agencies uh, will be utilized, uh, will be uh, one of the source of the agent for them to extract an information which has something to do with the background of the subject or the target for this matter. Because una -una, you cannot actually take an information or gather data to a particular agency, government or non-government agency, if the particular subject or target has nothing to do with it or parang wala siyang prior, uh, prior connection aning ang mga agencies. And also under the regular sources, it does not only refer to non-government and governmental agency, but it also uh, refers to uh, open sources such as magazine, newspapers, tri-media such as television, radio, and or the internet and or the social media for that matter as could be one of their sources of information as an open source as the as they categorize it okay so cultivated source cultivated ito yung mga informant at saka informer this will be discussed below and the grapevine so in the grapevine source to yung pinag-usapan natin kanina a while back 
uh, pertains to the underworld characters such as ex-convict, criminals, and the uh, prisoners, in which case we, we talked did, this a while ago that they are one of the best source of information since they already been there, they know the process, the procedure, and the connection, the, the name of the people, and the characteristics and approaches sa ilang criminal organization. So, and of course, this is the time that the collecting agency might able to activate informant network or assets. Ito na yung pinag-usapan nating informant and informer. So when we say informant network, it has two category, the informant at saka informer. Pag sinabing informant, they could still actually be part. Okay. Plus, pag sinabi natin informant, that is general term. Ah. Kasi yung informant, it composed of informant okay, and also informer. Pag sinabing informant, that is a general term referring to assets. Okay, referring to assets. Under which informant, pag sinabing informant, these are those individuals who could provide inform information to the agency or the concerned uh, intelligence organization for that matter without any consideration who are just only providing information. But on the other perspective, pag sinabi natin informant, they could somehow be actually has a connection with the PNP or any law enforcement organization for that matter. It actually depends on what would be the approach as to how they utilize the informant. Okay? Next is informer. Tong informer na to, these are those actually marginalized and under the monitoring and supervision of the law enforcement agency and or the intelligence organization for that matter. Meaning to say from time to time, they are the main uh, moving uh, prime mover as to gathering of data and information in order to aid their operation in the near future. And also we have different methods to be initiated and to be utilized in terms of collection of information. We have here the surveillance. So pag sinabing surveillance, it is a general term using, you, to be used in terms of observation of place, uh, the targets or persons uh, following of uh, vehicles. And of course, a casing job will also be utilized as to studying the possible number of entrance and exits of a particular building in our house and the number of people and our personals dwelling in the particular building and are working on a business uh, institution or business building. And of course, uh, the possible number of floors on a building. So those are the consideration in the casing job. And elicitation, be reminded that in the elicitation, it is a direct communication of the agent towards the suspect and or the target without knowledge on the part of the subject that he or she is actually or under interrogation. So elicitation is a form of Loki interrogation. Bakit Loki interrogation? Parang hindi alam ng suspect or I mean the target or the criminal that he is already under interrogation. Diba? So hindi nila alam yung goal. Hindi alam yung patutungan ng uh, usapan. But since the agent already opened a particular uh, topic and a conversation, so the subject and or the target is already under the approach of elicitation. We also have, or they also uh, utilize this, what we call undercover operation. So pag sinabing undercover operation, ito yung nag a ng fictional biographical data, yung agent natin or the intelligence officer for the matter of uh, avoiding to be detected and divulge or to be exposed or to expose his true identity with the enemy forces or subversive organization. Most especially whenever they are adapting this what we call organizational cover. Na kung saan they already adapted the, the, uh, somewhat like the truest identity or truest fictional identity to cover up their story uh, in order to pursue and to operate their okay? So And others as a means of or a method of collection of uh, information under this stage. So right after collection of information, since they already have gathered the data, they have the pertinent information pertaining to the crime reported or existed, this is the time that they are going to proceed the third stage, which is the, uh, which is the processing and evaluation. 
So the processing and evaluation, uh, this is very important since it involves uh, recording, it involves, yes, evaluation, where it also uh, take into consideration the pertinence of the information, the reliability of the information, and the credibility of the information. Why this is very important to, to be considered such? Uh, because under the recording, it is in the form of reduction of information. Now, meaning to say, they look into consideration that they are going to gather, they are going to integrate all the information being gathered, integrate and group into same elements and same units and characteristics of data and or information. So that this particular data, which has some same characteristics and nature with the other data being collected with the other intelligence officer, should be grouped together and must be separated from those unimportant data or those not of useful na mga data. So it's somewhat like uh, separating the grain from the shaft or uh, plowing of a maze of information. Napakaraming information and they need to be uh, categorized. They need to be uh, grouped in one element or in same element. So that is the very purpose for recording. So right after in recording, that is the time it must underwent to evaluation. In the evaluation, this is act Actually, more on determining the reliability, the pertinence, and the credibility of the information. So pag sinabi kasi natin rely a pertinence of the information, it actually talks about usefulness. Di ba? So pag sinabi natin usefulness, does it hold current value? Does it hold current scenario, situation, or current issue? So yun yung tinatawag natin pertinence, usefulness. Kasi kapag wala tong pertinency or it does it does not have hold pertinence to the current issue, so why bother to cater, why bother to give attention to this type of information? As much as possible, it should be set aside for the main time and you should this should focus on the main issue which has a pertinency uh, to the current issue. As to the data that they have gathered, as to the data that they have collected. And of course, they are going to determine the reliability. So pag sinabi natin reliability of information under the evaluation is that they are going to determine the uh, dependability of the information nga ilang nagadag. So pag sinabi ng dependability, uh, kining, uh, reliable ba ang kaning information coming from this particular agency? Di ba? Reliable ba tong information na to coming from this certain person or individual? So if such, if reliable, so they need to make use of that as a source of their information and later on be used and be utilized and considered to be intelligence report. But if not, they are going to disregard that because unang una, it has, some, it has nothing to do with the, the current uh, situation and or issues that they are dealing actually. Yeah? So those are, that is one of the consideration. And next to reliability is the credibility. Yeah? So and there's a credibility, it actually talks about uh, truthfulness of information. So when we say truthfulness of information, so if the, if the information really has a, or bearing with the truth of information nga imuang nakuha, now we're in, whenever be verified, will be used as a source and will be used for the future operation. So that actually talks about Pag sinabing credible, pinag-usapan din dito yung source, di ba? So it has something to do with or in relation to the reliability of information. How credible? So how truthful? Okay, how can si tawag ka ng ma maasahan ba na siya nga klase nga information? So be reminded that under the evaluation, they should look into or to take into consideration the, the pertinency the reliability and the credibility of the information which if does it hold a value, if that hold truthfulness and if that hold dependability of information to aid their operation or to aid their uh, future operation. And next, uh, under which, okay, undergo under the processing and evaluation, it must undergo or underwent proper handling and storage of gathered data in which the principle of need to know must be adapted. Okay, I want you to be reminded that in the need to be, a need to know principle is that 
Pag sinabing need to know principle, it is knowing to whom you are directed to report. You are directed to uh, kining tawagan na expose the information and give the information. It is not a matter of the position and or the rank to whom you are going to give the information, but it is a matter of to whom you are directed. Okay? It is really matter with the process and the procedure. Ibig sabihin like for example, I am the director of the intelligence organist. Uh, I am one of the intelligence handler of the intelligence organization. Therefore, a particular agent of such operation nga gipaandergo siya whenever nga nana siya na kulit ng mga data information, he should not going to give or expose the information that he or she gathered to me. Because unang-una, he or she is not directed to me. He must be reporting the information, gathered information to the person or authority whom he or she was directed. Okay? Again, it is not a matter of the position, but it is a matter of to whom you are directed as to a certain or particular uh, authorized individual to be exposed or to uh, be given with an information or gathered data. Okay? So need to know principle. Dapat alam mo kung saan mo lang, kung kang sino mo lang, ibigay mo yung information na yan. And it must be communicated to the decision maker. Why? Why there's a need for you to communicate this to the decision maker? The decision maker is the commander. Yeah? So meaning to say the commander must know therefore the very nature of the data collected, the very nature of the information collected so that the commander will be able to decide timely. Okay, following the principle of timeliness. Because as such, whenever you will not directly or automatically report that to the decision maker or the commander of the intelligence organization, what will happen then, that might be of not useful or that might be uh, masayang lang. Di ba? So it, may, it must be communicated to the decision maker. Next, must underwent selection process. Bakit yung... Uh, as I've said a while back, it must underwent selection process for the purpose of separating the grain from the shaft. Uh, para siyang, ano, uh, na kung saan ibig sabihin, separate ninyo yung hindi importante from the important. Okay? Or mis, uh, plowing the maze of information. So para bang pasikot-sikot, napakaraming informasyon na yung iba hindi naman magagamit. So you should uh, select those important one in order to, uh, in order to, supplement the operation or the, the, the data needed for your operation rather. And also determining the reliability, accuracy, and the sources of information. So class, be reminded, reliability of information. So andito yun si Kofnor, di ba? Accuracy, nandito yun si, si PPD at saka sources of information, yung T, sa to, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, di ba? A source coming from the commander, from the from the arrested enemy or arrested asylan, diba? coming from the military troops or coming from the uh, sa pana silang mga source or uh, source of information as to personalities or kining person and or agency for that matter. So accuracy and the sources of information. This will be it uh, with the guide of this what we call uh, kining evaluation guide. Diba? Hopefully, ah, nga, inyo na nang napamilyarize ang evaluation guide. Well, since our topic is sticking to the TOS or table of specification, so uh, I wasn't able to indicate si evaluation guide, but you can actually uh, look for that. Okay, next. Right after the processing and evaluation. Actually, processing and evaluation is uh, interrelated with analysis and interpretations. But what happened here, it, is, it has been separated from processing and evaluation, but they are interconnected. So right after processing and evaluation, meron tayong ditong pang fourth stage, which is analysis and interpretation. Ano tong under analysis and interpretation? Okay. The analysis and interpretation, it must underwent a process of analysis, integration, and deduction. So pag sinabi nating analysis it is more on collating okay ipinag uh, collating the same elements same characteristics and same nature of information as I've said a while back uh, kanina under sa evaluation 
di ba? Uh, under the uh, procedure uh, processing of an evaluation rather under the recording na kung saan pagsama yung information which has same elements, which has same characteristics and nature, then right after analysis, in the very stage of analysis, you are going to separate those not of use, uh, useful na information from the useful information. Right after then, you are going to integrate those useful information together. Right after integration, that is the time that you are going to make a conclusion and or a, a deduction as to what would be the outcome and the result of your evaluation pertaining uh, based on the analysis and based on the analysis that you have conducted. So what would be now your conclusion on that? So next to this is time to classify the documents based on the contents and or intelligence value. So ibig sabihin, that intelligence will not be labeled as top secret, will not be labeled as secret, and will not be labeled as confidential and restricted whenever it does not conform or it, it is not in conformity with the, with the intelligence value that it holds. So meaning what I mean is that you cannot label that as top secret, okay? Uh, I mean, top intelligence report whenever ang intelligence value niya, ang content niya ana ang intelligence value is not really in conformity and has nothing to do with or connection with the top secret intelligence sa iyahang nature. Di ba? So kinakailangan mo alam mo yung nature of the contents of the intelligence the contents and the uh, intelligence value bago mo siya ililabel ng top uh, sec, uh, top secret secret confidential at saka restricted na intelligence report and or intelligence data okay so reminder lang basic ra kay siya uh, ang basic kakalintan tungod kay ang kato ng mga technical na kayo ang inyong kakadumduman always pag sinabi nating information unevaluated unprocessed or considered to be raw data. Okay? Pag sinabi nating intelligence, that is considered to be intelligence when it is already uh, processed, already uh, evaluated, analyzed. Di ba? So, manang tawag na to intelligence. Ano man, ni-undergo na siya o process. Okay? Uh, and, so, those are the things under the analysis and interpretation. And also as to form part of which as to the means of preservation of this intelligence value. So they need really to protect it, uh, protect this uh, intelligence data and or information from any form of uh, spionage activity from the subversive organization, most especially from the unauthorized individual or unauthorized personnel in the respective organization where you are working, uh, working with. Yeah? So as much as possible, the means of storage is very uh, considerable also uh, to take into consideration. For example, pag top secret yung intelligence report mo, what type of storage device that you are going to store it, di ba? And the secret, confidential, and so on and so forth. So right after analysis and interpretation, okay, this is the time that they are going to disseminate a particular intelligence report and or intelligence data. So what are the considerations that they are going to take before disseminating the intelligence report and, in, and or intelligence data? They should take into consideration the author, authorized agency. They should take into consideration the agency to whom they are going to uh, disseminate the intelligence report. Because unang una, you are not allowed to disseminate or uh, give a copy to an agency or government organization in which you are not directed to disseminate because otherwise uh, you are actually uh, violating the procedure of your uh, of the intelligence organization and also uh, the national security might be at stake most especially whenever it will be divulged and exposed to the subversive organization most especially if the other intelligence organization is actually working with a subversive organization against with the government organization. So that is putting the security or the national security at risk. Yeah. So those are the things to be uh, uh, put into consideration. And also the time, uh, the time of 
dissemination of the intelligence data and intelligence report must always take into consideration as well because unang una, they should look into the timeliness of the usage of the intelligence report because if the, uh, the dissemination of the intelligence report is too soon or too early, so meaning that is uh, useless. But as to the dissemination naman po, it's too late, still useless. So meaning to say, they must always conform to the principle of timeliness as the principle of intelligence, as one of the principles of the intelligence, which is timeliness, and also for them to conform with the principle of usefulness. Diba? So because if it does not principle of timeliness, what will be then the effect is that the usefulness of the principle of usefulness will be affected. Mm -hmm. Not because as you could read the perspective of the usefulness in the principle of the intelligence, mababasa nyo doon na kung saan it should not be written on the book or on the record or it should not be written in the mind but as to the dissemination and exposing the report or intelligence and all the data is much or more helpful and of big usage and of great help for a particular concerned agency for the uh, risk concern or risk issues. So that will be for the concerned law enforcement agency. So is everything clear for the cycle of intelligence or police intelligence cycle? Yes, sir. Yes sir. Um, yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. So again, it undergo or underwent stages and or processes before it will become intelligence. Right? So a lot of considerations there to look into. So now let's proceed to the next scope. Okay? Scope of the uh, TOS or the table of specification, nature of police intelligence operations. Ano nga ba ang nature ng police intelligence operations? The very nature of the police intelligence operations is discrete in nature. Alam nga naman, di ba? Discrete in nature. Na kung saan, as to the gathering of data and information, might be they are going to utilize and or use of the open source and or the closed source but without compromising their identity and without compromising the very nature of their work and or their job. So that is the very nature of the police intelligence operations. And of course, they should always uh, resort to different methods and or approaches in terms of how are they going to initiate and ex as to extracting and obtaining of information uh, pertaining to the subversive organization and subversive, uh, I mean, criminal groups. Okay. Ano nga ba tong intelligence operation? So it includes surveillance of, uh, operation, counterintelligence, intelligence research. Yes, pag sinabing intelligence research, this is more concerned with the development, improvement as to what would be their adjustments in order to cope up with the rival organization or subversive organization for that matter. Because as such, whenever they will be, uh, whenever they will be uh, disadvantage with the strengths and or the uh, capabilities of the rival organization or the subversive organization, they will be or they might be five steps left behind diba? or two steps or one step behind. Intelligence assessment and similar police intelligence operation conducted to gather information related to security, public safety, and order. So meaning to say, it does not only to aid the daily routine of the law enforcement organization or the law enforcement agency for that matter, but they look into the general perspective of the state or the general perspective of the community wherein it relates to the national security. So it pertains really to the national policy, uh, the, the rules and the regulations, the, the state statutes, okay? the public safety and order as well in a particular community and society where this concerned and or certain law enforcement agency or organization to be specific with the PNP should look into. Yeah? So the very purpose of gathering police intelligence is to identify individuals or groups of individuals in an effort to first anticipate. So pag sinabi nating anticipate, they are trying to anticipate 
they are trying to know the possible diba? occurrence of crime or the possible action and or events and or activities of the enemy forces so, so that whenever their enemy are moving actually, that is the time that they could initiate and use the strategy or the tactical intelligence uh, type or the combat type so that they will be able to uh, protect the community from this order activities of the criminal organization. And also for the purpose of prevention or to prevent the future occurrence of the crime or future occurrence of disturbances in a certain community and or a society or also to prevent uh, further in the near future the compromisation of the national security uh, also pertaining to the uh, foreign policy and uh, foreign relationship uh, of our country to the other country, most especially if the relationship pertains to intelligence agency and intelligence uh, value, wherein it is now the it is now uh, the perspective of intelligence agency versus intelligence agency. Na kung saan uh, pwedeng mailagay sa alanganin or to compromise the security of the state by compromising or by exposing the 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 security uh, the national security the national uh, security or the state security for that matter pertaining to a uh, state relationship towards the foreign uh, state third one is monitor possible criminal activity so possible criminal activity meaning to say this particular group of individual has a potential to create and to indulge in a criminal activity with the aid and with the prior information that at already at hand diba? so pwede na nyo nga magamit so that you will be able to monitor the movement and or the possible activity of the criminals so if police intelligence is developed to the point where it factually establishes a criminal offense an investigation by the police investigative unit or other investigative agency will be initiated Meaning to say they are not going to initiate an investigation or intelligence investigation if they haven't yet established or established the criminal offense. So as what I've said or what we have discussed a while back pertaining to the cycle or intelligence cycle, they need to determine first, conduct, evaluate, and give a feedback if really the crime exists and or the event exists. Because otherwise, if it does not exist, and that is the time that they are not going to pursue. Because on the other hand, if they are going to pursue and yet na yung nga encroach na mga rights, na yung nga encroach na national or state policy and procedures, they might be prosecuted and be liable for that. Yeah. So be reminded that in terms of procurement, procurement of information, even that uh, information is leading to terrorist activities, still you need to have or undergo a proper procedure, okay? You need to verify it first. Apply, apply for a request to the supreme, uh, to the, uh, to the court. Now we're in. You will be allowed to conduct an operation or surveillance activity pertaining to the possible terrorist activities of a group of individual. Because otherwise, you are violating that. Uh, can you procedure anti the under the anti-terrorism uh, act or anti-terrorism law? which also indicated under the Republic Act number 9372, now which has in liaison with the NICA, the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, and also with the Armed Forces Intelligence or Intelligence of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. So kinan lang sila nga mag-collaborate. Uh, most especially sa bagong balaod na to karon, okay? Sa New Terrorism, di ba? Terrorism Act, nga kung saan na lag uh, na approve way back 2018 if I'm not mistaken. Diba, na, na yung mga red tagging so very uh, very kuan kena siya sensitive issue while uh, kanang going back okay very sensitive kena siya because of red tagging but in that particular law in a statement pod nga uh, they are uh, they are actually excluding and disregarded those mga uh, mga rallies mga protest and pertaining to uh, kaning tawag ana kanang issues pertaining to labor disputes so wala na nila gi-indicate. So grabe ka specific, grabe nga pagka-craft ana nga balaod in order to avoid lamang the red tagging. 
So dagan kayo siya ka ng issue ana but at the end of the day still being approved and enforced as already a law. Okay. So hopefully that you look into that particular uh, below. So rules and nature of law enforcement intelligence. So, ano nga ba ang functions and the nature of the law enforcement intelligence agencies? Okay, we have the following. First, obtaining and integrating information into a cohesive and logical case file or description of crime trends. So, meaning to say, this, uh, this actually uh, looking into uh, the gathered, already gathered data uh, as to the description of the crime trends, the group of criminals, and or the uh, modus operandi of a particular uh, criminal groups. Okay? in which you obtain and integrate them all so that you will be able to revisit it, you will be able to look it back whenever it is needed and necessary in your uh, duty or operation. Uh, if most especially it has to do with uh, the current issue that you are investigating or the intelligence unit uh, that they are investigating. The second one is identifying crimes and crime, uh, crime trends. So, uh, crime trends through information assessment, report review of data comparisons, and uh, crime analysis. Okay. So most especially in the crime analysis, so it really involved thoroughness of evaluation and analysis pertaining to the existence of crimes. Uh, most especially the one. Uh, most especially if knowing the. Uh, the existence of the non-index and the index crimes. Diba? So, in order for them to derive with the, uh, uh, in order for them to derive with uh, the crime rate, so that they will be able actually to design a particular program of what would be the best program to address such issue. So, be reminded in the crime rate, uh, in order for you to analyze really the existence of crime, the formula for that is CV or crime rate equals to the number of crime reported, which, which the, sum, the sum total of the index crime and the non-index crime uh, will be divided into the total number of population in a certain area and will be multiplied into, uh, into 100,000 population as it standard by the uh, Philip, uh, sana. Philippine Statistics Office, uh, the PC, PAC, Philippine Stat Statistics Authority. So, nana ang pagkua sa uh, crime rate equals to uh, crime number of crime reported, which includes the index and the non-index crime, will be divided into the number of population in that concerned area and will be multiplied into 100,000. So, that is how you got or you get the crime rate that could uh, that is actually be of usage and help for the crime analysis yeah so next to this role of law enforcement uh, agency is identifying criminals okay in identifying criminals this is through the use of deduction okay so pag sinabing deduction that is in a form other term is conclusion information assessment and application of the scientific method so pag sinabi natin scientific method class, it might be in the form, it must be, or it should be, or might be in the form of research, di ba? criminological research, in order for you really to understand and identify particular crimes, and in order for you to support your allegations and your theory why these particular crimes existed. Uh -huh. So meaning to say, the rule really of the enforcement intelligence is not only sticking purely on gathering of information and or gathering of data, but also they should somehow employ uh, statistics uh, kanang studies and or scientific method of studies so that it will be supported with professional approach na type of assessment ang ilahang study or intelligence report. Next is developing cases for prosecution in court. Since it has been identified, uh, the crime that existed and the person uh, or the assailant there too. Uh, this is the time or the room for the uh, intelligence unit to develop a case to be filed before the court for court prosecution. And next is providing investigative support to investigators uh, involved in long-term and complex case investigation. So, ibig sabihin, like for example, if 
if the NBI would have to have a uh, investigation pertaining to a heinous crime or pertaining to sensitive uh, crime for that matter, it would be now the other uh, law enforcement agency to, to help out or they will talk to the liaison agency for that matter in order to give a supporting data that needed or supporting intelligence needed by them when it comes to complex case investigations. Next is projecting crime trains. So pag sinabing projecting para bang at tinitingnan na nila kung ano yung mangyayari within this span of years. Like for example, uh, five years from now between 2000, uh, 2021, 2025. Uh, so ano yung mga types of crimes, the crime trains, for the purposes of planning and law enforcement resources allocation. So this is for the very purpose of knowing what would be the possible uh, alloc uh, resources to be allocated or the budget since it will be projecting uh, the possible uh, expenditures for a particular operation and or for the particular uh, activity of the intelligence unit. Because really, money matter most in terms of uh, kining, uh, kining enforcing or uh, kining initiating the operation, most especially when it talks about the budget for the resources to be used during the operation or for the operation to be conducted. Okay, let's proceed. We have the objective of intelligence. What is the objective? Of course, to ensure rational and timely decision making. Why we discuss this individually? Because under the TOS, muning ginaingon nga, uh, can reiterate ang giingon dito sa TOS is reiterate and articulate yeah, this following nga mga uh, can specified topics under the TOS to ensure rational and timely decision making. Anong ibig sabihin ng ensure rational decision making? Pag sinabing rational decision making, it must be supported with detailed information. Okay? It must be uh, uh, supported with uh, prudence mind, it must be supported with thoroughness of judgment before they, will, before they will carry out or carrying out such operation. Because otherwise, what will happen then, the operation ma might be uh, of failure. And of course, to ensure timely decision making. Pag sinabing timely decision making, as I've said well back, that the intelligence organization must always conform to the principle of timeliness. Because if the intelligence is disseminated too soon, this is useless. And if it is disseminated too late, so that is still useless. So as much as possible, time-bounded, it must be uh, conforming to the principle of timeliness. To whom it should be directed? Be reminded, it should be directed to the decision maker. Okay, let's proceed with the next one, functions of intelligence. Okay, so of course, to collect uh, the collection or procurement of information. So the other private or uh, private organization or private intelligence organization other than the law enforcement intelligence unit is that they are not actually allowed to apprehend and or to arrest the assailant and or the criminals for that matter because this is not their primary job. It is the primary job of the law enforcement intelligence unit particularly in the PNP, the NBI, or the PDF for that matter, to arrest and or to apprehend the assailant or the criminal. But on the private intelligence organization, what their primary function is only for collection or procurement or information in order to aid or to help out the law enforcement agency and or organization for their uh, operation to be conducted. Siyempre, paliton man na, bayran man na sa law enforcement organization ang na procure nga, nga data coming from the agent of the uh, private intelligence organization. Next is the evaluation of the information which then become intelligence. Third, the dissemination of intelligence to those who need it. Okay, so meaning to say it should only be disseminated to whom it should be given. Okay. Uh, counter intelligence or negative intelligence which is the dedicated to the concealment and protection of one's own information pertaining to adversary intelligence operation. So now let's proceed here. What is police intelligence? Mm -hmm. 
So, according aning ning emoticon, ang intelligence kuno or police intelligence is end product resulting from the collection evaluation class. The police intelligence considered to be end product. Sir, ano yung end product? Pag sinabi kasi nating end product, it refers to that the information has been evaluated, has been analyzed, and has been interpreted. Okay? Or has been processed. That is what we mean for end product. Ngunit ang gitawag na siya police intelligence. And another key term to remember under the police intelligence uh, is that this is only for the purpose of or regarding to the criminal activities and other law violators. So meaning to say, ang ilang primary concern sa police intelligence is para lang agtong criminal activities and or the law violators for that matter. Wala na ilain. Okay. So we have the three major categories of types of police intelligence. Okay. So we have these three categories. So as you've uh, can you observe, na itulo dira, na itchis move, sa maning nag-away si Lee Ugsi ka ng Gaara, uh, na po yung murag buksingiro nga nanumbag. Uh, so under this, we have the strategic intelligence. So ano nga ba tong strategic intelligence? So be reminded, the strategic intelligence is primarily long-range in nature. Meaning to say, it does not hold immediate or immediate practical value. So this type of intelligence is long-range in nature, which is could be used in the near future or in the future operation. Next to strategic intelligence is counterintelligence. Okay. So we are not, there is an inquan GIF, we are not focusing on yung nakagreen na, kundi nag-focus ta ng gaara na counter yung gibuat since defense. Okay. Defense ang yung gibuat. Defending counterintelligence is defending of the organization against its criminal enemies. Okay, defending of the organization against its criminal enemies, more on defensive effort or defensive stat, uh, in which it tries to block and impede enemies' effort to access the assets of particular organization. And the third one is line intelligence. Okay, the line intelligence is actually uh, actually, kinitawag na, uh, lahi sa strategic intelligence. Because yung strategic is long range, while naman yung line intelligence, uh, this actually uh, more on police functions oh, in the line unit, okay? Which conform to an immediate nature and necessary for more effective police planning and operations. So this is more on offensive effort. Pag sinabing offensive effort, they have the actual engagement or actual operation that they are visible enough. Yeah? But since we are talking about police intelligence, uh, most of the time, it conform to the uh, covert police patrol. Biramayandida sa covert police patrol, uh, it is the police officers assigned in patrol function na kung saan he is not wearing the police uniform. He is actually in the plain clothes, but conducting police patrol. Muna gitawag na ito covert police patrol or co covert patrol. Okay? So that is in the line intelligence. And also, in the line intelligence, we have the investigative unit of the police, which actually in conformity with the uh, intelligence unit and or department of the PNP or the, or the Philippine National Police. So let's consider the methods of intelligence. So actually, in terms of procurement of information, procurement of data, we they have this what we call methods of intelligence. First, uh, they have this counterintelligence, the surveillance, the third one is casing, and the fourth one is identification uh, method. So moving on, the counterintelligence. Uh, the objective of which is to safeguard information against spinach, material and installation against sabotage and personnel so against subversive. So as you have noticed, it is more on defensive stat. Diba? Yung counterintelligence. More on protection, more on defense, more on blocking and denying. They are not on the actual. But let's 
let's differentiate uh, let us uh, kining tackle the three activity of criminal intelligence here before we'll go to the types of uh, counter intelligence so we have the three activities of counter intelligence first protection of information against espionage so meaning to say it is more on protecting uh, the information from spies or spinach activity of the subversive organization or enemy organization. And the second one is protection of personnel against subversion. So this is undermining or overpowering the uh, position and or function of the personnel, most especially those mga, uh, holding position in the government. Protection of installation and materials against sabotage. So for example, gibumbahan, uh, military camps or military installation and or the material and or equipments were heads of the uh, law enforcement, uh, I mean the militaries and or the PNPs for that matter. So we have the general types of the CI or the counterintelligence. We have three, the passive measure, the active measure, and the deception measures. In the passive measure, it is more on protection, denying, okay, denying the access, denying the passage of the enemy forces to have a procurement of the data and information sa inyong agency. But on the active measure, it is more on actual engagement, actual involvement in which SIC actively blocks the enemy's efforts to gain information or engage in spinach, subversive, or sabotage. So yung active, it is more on actual, uh, actual engagement na kung saan kinikarry out din nila yung spinach mission against spy of the subversive or the enemy of organization and subversion also and sabotage with the enemy's camps and or installations. Deception measures. So pag sinabing deception measures, it is to administering or instituting fictional identity or some uh, means of deception measures in order to deny the enemy's access towards your identity and your exposures towards them. So that is for deception measures. Next, we have the counter uh, intelligence. Okay. So the counter intelligence is also known as negative intelligence. Bakit negative intelligence? Kasi it tries to block, impede, and try to uh, kining defend the enemy from accessing its assets. So it is a generic name remaining three, uh, meaning three different things. What are these three different things? We have security intelligence, okay? counter intelligence, at saka counter espionage. Okay, so security intelligence. Ano itong security intelligence? Pag sinabi natin security intelligence, it talks about the total sum or the sum total of the security and the policy of the state. Okay? Uh, state security pertaining to procedures, the policy pertaining to its relationship with the foreign countries, uh, most especially relationship of the intelligence agencies with the other countries follow, by following the uh, policy of the state and of course the procedure in terms of procurement and in terms of uh, kening exposing and dissemination of intelligence data in order to aid or to help out uh, the friend uh, the, the friend intelligence agency or to the other countries. So under which it also considered the national policies. So tinitingnan dito, like for example, the issues pertaining to Scarabrucial or Spratlis na kung saan talagang binabato ngayon ng mga oppositions to the current administration, most especially yung naagaw ng, uh, nakuha ng China na Spratlis, uh, tinitingnan nila doon yung national policy, di ba? So pag sinabi nating national policy is that if they still conform to the policies as if, if they are going to claim that. Because unang-una, uh, I mean, the Kalayaan Island pala, unang-una, that has not been uh, claimed by the Philippines and is not owned already by the Philippines. Meaning, lot of claimants on that or over that particular islands based on the intelligence report nga ilang nakita. So whenever nga mupurso sila na due to the fact of the national policies that they possess, they are not going to pursue. But if it is in conforming to the national policies that the Philippines has, they are going to pursue that. Diplomatic decisions. Pag sinabing diplomatic decisions, as much as possible, 
the the intelligence report or the intelligence data that they possess or possess by like for example the armed forces of the Philippines if they're going to expose that if they're going to divulge that publicly it might able to compromise uh, the relationship in terms of diplomatic decisions between the Philippines, the US, and the China. Diba? So tinitignan doon yung diplomatic relationship in terms of having the diplomatic decisions because whenever the Philippines will pursue and trying to force the China to fight back or else China is forcing the Philippines to fight back, here it now, the, the, the US armed forces will intervene in what will happen then, so magkagubot. So as much as possible, the intelligence pertaining to uh, diplomatic relationships it must always look into and revisit the decision pertaining to diplomatic issues okay and military data and any other information of a secret nature affecting the security of the nation from unauthorized persons so mostly uh, talamak diri ang ginatawag natong spionage mission or spionage activity uh, most especially in the armed forces of the philippines they do not know really uh, the allegiance of their men they do not really the allegiance of their personal if the allegiance is still intact with them because unang una there are a lot of uh, issues that some of the uh, armed forces of the Philippines personnel were actually negotiating with the leftists diba we back diba we back na kung saan they are dealing with the firearms in terms of uh, monetary gain what would be the uh, kining possible information nga magain sa lifties and then there will be consideration or a monetary uh, return to that. So those are the consideration to look into by the uh, kanang military personnel as to if the loyalty and the allegiance of their personnel still intact. So dako na gyapon siya nga problema. So that is why they need an internal intelligence to be worked. Uh, I mean, uh, work workable or else functional. Uh, para at least for them to determine ang mga inside jobs. Counterintelligence. So in the general perspective, uh, counterintelligence organized effort to protect specific data that might be of value to the opponent's own intelligence organization. So by censorship. So ibig sabihin, as much as possible, it should not be uh, kining accessible by the subversive organization it may it must be in the form of an intelligence uh, approach okay so uh, as much as possible they are going to adapt this what we call uh, kanang algorithm type of uh, kining kining stawgana kining uh, disguising those information so that will not be uh, penetrated and or be kanang extracted by the enemy so prevent dissemination of any information, maintenance of files of suspect. So maintenance of files of suspect, this is for the very purpose of reviewing and revisiting the file of the suspect whenever they're about to apprehend or even to conduct a surveillance or investigation pertaining to the said target. Surveillance of the suspect, uh, this is subject for following the subject and observation of the current activities and the possible uh, actions of the suspect. Mail reading and wire tapping. So mail reading, it is more on uh, reading the content of the letters and or the mail, mail, mail rather, uh, in order for them to determine if there are uh, growing discrepancies. Wire tapping as well. Be reminded that wire tapping is very sensitive issue. Be reminded of the Republic Act number 4200 that before a law enforcement personnel uh, conduct a wiretapping activity, they must uh, secure first a, ano, they must secure first a tawag na, kanang consent coming from the court. Okay? They will be allowed by the court to conduct wiretapping pertaining to uh, the criminal activity or a activity of a criminal that about to be done. And they need really to establish this what we call prima facie evidence uh, to the court in order for them to be granted and to be given. Because as such, if ever they will conduct a wiretapping uh, activity and yet they are going to use or to make use of this during court prosecution for presentation of evidence, uh, might be, uh, chances are the, the case will be dismissed or the 
the evidence will be disapproved or will be ng inadmissible. Diba? So, inan ang may tabo sa wiretapping. Again, kung ang mga law enforcement personnel need sila mag-conduct o wiretap para sa sensitive na criminal activities, most especially if it involves terrorism activities, kinakailangan nilang mag-secure first of a consent coming from the uh, court. Okay. So, most especially uh, pag maski pa o kanang, kanang private individual na, but if The nature of the criminal act is uh, towards the necessity or towards to the uh, immediate necessity for the police, uh, for the law enforcement personnel to act automatically and directly on that particular time. Uh, the particular law enforcement officer or personnel could actually do the wiretapping if na nasa actual. But if not during that time na para bang by chance lang yung observation and by chance lang yung discovery of the conversation, you, can, you could do actually the wiretapping but you could not make use of that as evidence. But you could make use only that as a part of your gathered data and or information that later on will be used in Sean and for the uh, kanang arrest. Next is infiltration of the enemy intelligence organization to procure information about its method, uh, personal, specific operations, and interest. So, muna yung gibuhat ni Kuano, ni kanang, uh, ni kanang Carl Skolmister na kung saan uh, they actually penetrated, uh, infiltrated. Okay, be reminded that the difference between infiltration at saka penetration. Okay. So pag sinabi nating infiltration, ito yung agent na kung saan ay pumasok siya sa subversive organization. Okay, just to observe the procedure uh, the method of crime operation. But pag sinabi nating penetration, it is where the enemy agent is being utilized by your organization to gather information for them, di ba? Na kung saan inilagay siya pabalik sa kanilang organization. Uh, para mag-gather ng data. Ginagamit mo siya to gather data against their organization. So, yun yung penetration. So, the third one is counter spinage under the three things of the counter intelligence. The counter spinage, it aims uh, to locate the enemy, to identify the enemy, and to neutralize the enemy. So, its purpose is to investigate actual or theoretical violation of espionage laws. Okay. So be reminded again that only the law enforcement personnel who are tasked and vested with the power of apprehension and with the, vested with the power of arrest by the Constitution of the Philippines nga magbuhat nga mo arrest sa usa ka tao pag nasakpan if nagkandak si espionage mission. But if ang naatasan lang to conduct uh, espionage uh, to conduct observation or investigation pertaining to the act of espionage laws by the enemy or subversive organization is coming from the private or coming from the agent of the private intelligence organization. They are not allowed to apprehend or arrest. Instead, they are only going to provide information to the police, to aid the police for the possible apprehension and arrest of a particular uh, uh, individual who conducts espionage laws. To enforce those laws and to apprehend any violators, it is a job to catch spies. It is basically a police function, as I've said a while back. So meaning to say, spinach activities on the part of the police uh, intelligence operation is that they are more likely to apprehend and to arrest if they tend to observe uh, discovered uh, violation pertaining to spinach laws, most especially if it pertains to the compromisation of the sensitive uh, intelligence report or, or information and or data sa organization. So in order to protect and also to assess, assess the function and the, the operation of the police, uh, it is being assisted with the Commonwealth Act number 616 or CA number 616, which actually uh, acted uh, way back June 4, 1941. 
So an act of punish spinach and other offenses against the national uh, security. Against national security. So whosoever na uh, na sakpan or nadakpan. So this was actually uh, kining during the time of the World War II, di ba? So na buhat niya also during the World War II just because uh, there are uh, kining Filipinos who were actually aiding the Japanese troops in giving o uh, aiding the Japanese troops in giving of information pertaining to the operation and the plans of the armed forces of the Philippines in abating or in uh, fighting the Japanese troops. Okay, so so I could still remember one of the issues here na kung saan yung father of Ninoy Aki, uh, the previous president na kung saan nakipag Uh, sabuatan sa mga gerili anak uh, ipag sabuatan sa mga Japanese troops giving information pertaining to the national security the plans and the operations of the armed forces of the Philippines uh, na kung saan one of the reasons why there is a big battle between the uh, Japanese and the Philippines armed forces and to together okay together with the uh, armed forces of the US Surveillance. Okay, so surveillance, it is a form of clandestine investigation which consists of keeping persons, place, or other targets. So we have the types of surveillance. This is according to intensity and sensitivity and according to methods. So let's tackle first the according to intensity and sensitivity. So first, we have discrete. Second, we have loose. And the third one is we have close. So discrete. Pag sinabing discrete, the subject person to be watched is unaware that he is under observation. It's discrete. Patago. Hindi alam ng subject that he was under observation and under surveillance. Pag sinabi naman natin close, sur uh, loose surveillance rather, this applied frequently or infrequently. So ibig sabihin, uh, pwedeng palagian or pwedeng hindi palagian ag pagkandak ng surveillance which actually uh, varied uh, the period of observation varied on each occasion so ibig sabihin ng varied on, uh, varied on each occasion that could be in favor with the intelligence officer during mga uh, mga special events uh, the subject is attending to or special occasions or the special place where the uh, subject is acquainting with the other uh, persons or personalities or acquaintances And the close surveillance, pag sinabing close surveillance, alam ng subject that he is being uh, under surveillance and or observation. Okay, so most of the time, kumo na kayo ni sa mga, kumo na kayo ni sa mga, kinistawag ka ng, kumo na kayo ni sa mga, uh, kaning mga execute, uh, kanang, kanabitong tig execute, oh, kaning mga mupatay o mga tao, mga hitman, di ba? So kumo na kini sa mga hitman wherein the surveillance for them is very close and identifiable yung ident uh, kanang kuan agent nga nagkandak og surveillance again sa ilaha knowing for a fact that they are already divulged and exposed to the world of law enforcement agencies and being verified therefore. But and the second one is according to methods. So according to methods first we have stationary pag sinabing stationary, uh, the conduct of surveillance is uh, through observation of place, usually a bookie or stool, stall, stall rather, a gambling joint, a residence where illegal activities are going on. In short, fixed position. Ibig sabihin, yung surveillance lamang is intact, fixed, not movable. That is what we mean for stationary. And uh, the second is moving surveillance. Pag sinabing moving surveillance, it could be Uh, following the subject from place to place, it could be through vehicle, it could be through foot uh, surveillance. And the third is technical surveillance. Pag, tinaking, pag sinabi natin technical surveillance, it is with the aid or employment of the technologies and or the gadgets in order to, in order to determine and monitor the movement of the enemy and or the 
uh, kining subversive individual as part of the subversive organization. Most especially the state-of-the-art technologies na mga infrared devices. Diba? So, nana siya nga mga gamit in order to determine uh, the target individuals as the subject. So, we have the definition of terms. Kabalo naman mo, Ani, kung saan yung surveillance. Pag sinabi natin surveillance, the person who conducts surveillance activity. Stick out or plant. So, pag sinabing stick out or plant, this uh, it is the observation of places or areas from fixed point. Okay, the stick out or plant does not refer to a place being observed, but it refers to the uh, activity of an agent who is actually positioning himself in the fixed point. Pag sinabing fixed point, it is a place where the agent is observing the target place. Okay, it is not referring to a place of observation as the target. Okay, mo nang stick out or plan. Tailing or shadowing. Of course, tailing or shadowing is following the uh, person's movement or the activity of the persons. Undercover man, it is a person wherein using uh, fictional biographical data in order to penetrate the subversive organization or to infiltrate the enemy organization. So we have this, okay? So safe house and drop, be reminded. So are you still there? Pwede ba nga ato saning ansiran gamay? I know nga murag nagyan ninyo ni, but I want you to respond with my question. So which do you think here is the safe house and the drop? Just tell me. Ikadua, sir. Ikadua ang? Safe house. Safe okay. house. Ang safe house kay nasa ikadua nga definition. And the drop is for the first one. Okay. So yung safe house, okay, that is correct. The safe house actually it refers to the place or building in close mobile or an apartment where police and their government met for the briefing or reporting purposes. Class, be reminded, pag sinabing safe house, this is the usual. Pag sinabing usual, ito yung pinaka main area or main place na kung saan talaga silang magkikita for the debriefing purposes or reporting purposes as to the development and progress of their operation. Pag sinabi mo namang drop, ito yung other places where the agents feel that they are safe enough to exchange information to have or to do a reporting as to the progress of their investigation or operation or for the briefing purposes. Ibig sabihin ng drop, it is not the usual place na kung saan talagang doon sila but it is a place that they feel that they are safe enough in terms of exchanging of collected data and or information. So that is the difference between the safe house and the drop. How about the second one? Can we pair it? Which, which of which is the convoy and the decoy? Decoy number one. How about the others? Yes, Mosqueda? Decoy number two, sir. So meaning si convoy number one. <laughs> so is that? Okay, convoy is, that is the first definition. And the decoy is for the second definition. So be reminded that si kalainan sa dua. Pag may yung convoy an accomplice or associate of the subject used to avoid or elude surveillance. Ibig sabihin pala ng convoy, ito yung kasamahan ni target ito yung kasamahan ng kriminal na kung saan ang purpose ng convoy na to, uh, pagsabihan niya yung kasama niyang kriminal na, uy, kriminal, kriminal sir, or sir, kriminal, mayroong police agent na nagpa-follow sa'yo. That is the convoy there. Pag sinabi naman nating decoy, i-cover supporting the surveillance who can become a convoy whenever surveillance is burned. Okay. Ayaw mo kalibogan ng can become a convoy. So, kaning decoy is actually the associate of the agent. The associate of the surveillance. Na kung saan, okay, the purpose of the decoy is to determine if naabay, di ba? Of naabay convoy ni subject nga nag-follow sa agent. Di ba? So, miingon ka ron si decoy nga, huy, agent one, na ay convoy si subject nag-follow sa imo. Kung muli ko na karon si subject pag mo follow ka mahibaw ana ni convoy ug mutog ana si convoy 
ngadto sa iyang kauban nga kriminal. So therefore si Bicoy is kauban ni agent, kauban ni surveillance, kauban ni law enforcement officer. Okay. So that is the difference between the two. Okay. How about this one? Which is which the burnout and the maid? Burnout, sir. Kedua. Burnout, kedua, sir. Kedua, burnout, sir. Kedua. So, ang maid is muna. Permiro, sir. Burnout, kedua. Okay, burnout, kedua. Okay, so that is correct. Of course. Of course. Uh, kinaunag yun na ninyo, no? O basig na lang may gibantayan di ang uh, murag symbol. Uh. Okay, so burnout is ang ikadua. Pag sinabi natin burnout, when the surveillance doing surveillance is being identified by the subject. Ibig sabihin pala ng burnout, it refers to the surveillance nga naobserbaran ni subject. Diba? So karun di ay, si surveillance is nabantayan ni subject. Muna ang burnout. Pero diri sa maid, okay, diri sa maid ang atuang gisturyan si subject. Okay? Si subject atong gisturyan sa maid. When subject under surveillance becomes aware that he is under observation and identifies the observer. Actually as you looking into it, the burnout and maid were actually alike and has the same approach and nature. But as to the difference is the main topic of the issue. Pag sinabing burnout, ang pinapan, si surveillance na pag-alaman ni subject. Pero dito sa maid, si subject na pag-alaman niya na sumusunod si surveillance. Okay? So kung i-follow na to ang rules sa sentence construction, okay, subject, direct, object. Di ba? So sa maid, ang atuang subject diri is si subject, katong target. Okay? At ang subject in the sentence is si target kaning word nga subject. Ang direct object diri is becomes aware. Di ba? Ang atong direct object diri sa sentence construction is si subject becomes aware nga na si surveillant. But in the burnout, ang atong subject in the sentence construction is si surveillant. Ang direct, ob uh, direct object diri is what? Being identified by the subject. Diba? So, mawa na ang atong lantaon. Unang giingon class nga, dili ragit ingon, nga atong lantaon o basiyan is pamaagi sa atong nadumduman o gimimores, giunsa pag-arrange. Pero dapat ato pong i-apply kung giunsa pag-construct ang usaka sentence. Diba? So, that's, that's how you are going to differentiate the burnt out and the made. Okay. So, we have the contact. Of course, it refers to person whom the subject is uh, having a communication with the Vasanaika history or unsa that will be considered as the contact might be one of the references and or the source of information by the agent and or the surveillance. Lost. It is the time when uh, the subject is already out of sight on the site of the surveillance. Okay, casing. I think this is the fourth. Oh, I mean, this is the third part of the methods of Information gathering. Okay, so ano nga ba tong casing? A recognizance or surveillance of a building, place or area to determine its suitability for intelligence use or its vulnerability in operation. So ibig sabihin, it is more uh, studying the characteristics and the nature of the building or the area, target area for that matter. If it involves building, the, this is more in concern with the number of entrance and exits. Yeah, and the number of floors of the building, and the number of floor where the subject or the target is, ah, kining nagpundo. Why there's a need for the intelligence officer to determine the number of exits and entrance? Is unang unang pag naibalan sa intelligence officer ng there are only two exits and one entrance. Pero ang tinuod na itulog ka entrance na lima ka exits, yung nabantayan dua ra ka exit, wisa ra ka entrance. What will happen then? Dagan kayo ang nalusutan sa kalaban o sa enemy uh, enemy forces. So that is the importance for the casing job. So casing or reconnaissance, what is the difference of the two? Actually, the casing or reconnaissance is actually the same, but the agency or the one who make use of the term were different. Pag in casing, the term is used in the police organization. 
Pag sinabing recon or reconnaissance, it is a term used by the military organization. So, yun lang ang kaibahan ng dalawa. Walang kaibahan as to the concept, as to the approach, as to the as to the essence of intelligence operation, but it only differs with whom is the one use it, using the terms. So, kana lang. So, methods of casing. Meron tayong ano, ilan? Meron tayong lima dito, methods of casing. Uh -huh. First, meron tayong personal recognizance. Pinag-uusapan na natin to kanina ang personal recognizance na wherein uh, the intelligence officer or agent for, the, for that matter must be personally who conducts or have a direct engagement with the operation and the gathering and the conduct of gathering of data and or information. The second one is map recognition. It is more on considering the structure of the terrain, uh, the, the nature and or the characteristics of the area or the area of operation uh, that is subject for their future operation. So that is for the map recognizance. And the third one is research. Ano tong research? Much information can be acquired through research. Ibig sabihin ng methods of casing, they are not only focusing on the personal recognizance in the map recognizance, but as much as possible, if ever they will make the information or make the information available in the open sources such as magazines, newspapers, social media, or tri-media for that matter, it could be of use, use, useful. Next is the prior information. Ibig sabihin ng prior information, this is advanced data information na already gathered or in the in the record of the organization before sila nga, uh, na subject of interest ang usa ka tao or sub considered to be the target ang usa ka tao so this is wherein your unit and of the unit will have file report that they may provide you with the information third uh, fourth one is the hearsay so ano tong hearsay uh, in the technical term, the heresy technical term, which is being used by the intelligence agents and or officers for that matter, heresy, these are information usually gained by the person operating in the area. So, uh, usually gained by the person operating in the area, parang meron naman siyang actual engagement doon. Ha? Bakit naman tinatawag na heresy? It's just a technical term being used by the intelligence officer, not on the legal perspective. Kasi iba yung legal perspective eh. Uh, an, an information only taken from the other person or coming from the other source. But in the perspective of intelligence, talking about technical, the technical term that they are using is that heresy here is referring to the uh, information being gained by the person operating in the area and performing the casing job. Okay, Because unang-una in the casing job, it is more on observation. It is more on analysis and evaluation of the place or area of operation. Diba? Because in the casing, if you want to study the, the building, you must position yourself in the opposite building for you able to uh, uh, monitor the movement of the possible target nga ana ng floor. As much as possible, dapat glass yung wall para ma-observara ni mo ang movement. So you cannot actually hear the communication pag naikatawag. You cannot actually hear the uh, conversation whenever nasa ka istorya. But you can only put into record those identity of persons whom he has contact with. Okay? So these are the methods of casing. Identification method is the last method of uh, operation. First, okay. identification method, we're talking about here portrait parley. Ano nga ba tong portrait parley? It is a, a parade of or a description of a spoken picture na kung saan uh, the portrait parley is composed of a lot of pictures or a parade of pictures na kung saan uh, it shows up the numerous uh, faces of the possible uh, kining suspects that might be a person of interest na ilang i-undergo surveillance or investigation. So this actually in relation to the personal features of an individual and it can be briefly described as a world description or a spoken picture. Pamaagi lang sa picture, that is what we mean for portrait parley. Under the identification method, meron tayong branding and mutilation. So the branding and mutilation, this is not, we are not talking about here the early forms of punishment ha, and the correction 
But we are talking about here the identification method na kung saan this is the this is one of the means of identifying the uh, kumbaga kining uh, kanang unique uh, unique identification on the part of the subject and or the person like for example lang imong suspect is walay isa kadalunggan di ba or walay dua kadalunggan uh, cookie naman siguro na ang imong suspect di ba so mutilation ay mga naiputol sa tudlo or naiputol sa dalunggan or nabakay karas sa naong di ba so identification method branding or else na mga tattoos any parts of the body so sa siko sa likod sa bu sa bukton sa tiil or sa kung asa ba na dira ang kuyaw lang dira is pag naka cover all di mo mahibawan di ba so as much as possible we must be keen enough and be uh, artistic in terms of gathering data by means of identification method Parade system with portrait parley, ito yung pinagsasabi ko kanina, parade system with portrait parley, uh, this, this actually involved with a series of photographs accompanied with the official description and or uh, personal features of the particular suspect and or the criminal. Fingerprint method, this is scientific myth type of method na kung saan ginagamit ng mga law enforcement personnel in order for them to scientifically support uh, their allegations and their suspe uh, uh, suspicious, uh, uh, I mean, to support the uh, to suspect and or to the criminal. So by means of fingerprint uh, method, because fingerprint as a method of personal identification, no one could get away from this because unang una, each and every person has different class characteristics, di ba? and individual characteristics of a fingerprint patterns. So we're done with that part. Uh, excuse for a while, just. the inconvenience okay so now we are down to the second uh, scope of the TUS which is the procedures and processes and intelligence operations this one is very ano, kining, focusing on the legal perspective as to the procurement of the data or information pertaining to criminal activities okay so let's proceed with the procedures and processes and intelligence operations <clears throat> okay, let's proceed for the first one. Uh, first is that criminal intelligence as to the procedure or process. Criminal intelligence information concerning an individual shall be collected and maintained, be reminded of the word only, okay? Only if it is reasonably suspected that the individual is involved in criminal activity. So as much as possible, if it has nothing to do with the criminal activity of an individual, you are not allowed to uh, take an information or uh, procure information uh, of a particular in individual because that is in violation of uh, right to privacy act of an individual. And the second one is, okay, no record shall be maintained or collected about political, religious, or social views association or activities of any individual group, uh, individual group, association, corporation, business or partnership, unless, be reminded of the term, unless such information directly relates to an investigation of criminal activities. So, ibig sabihin, with these things that being enumerated here, you are not allowed to maintain or even collect this information pertaining to an individual or criminal individual which has nothing to do or which has or we don't which don't have a connection with a criminal activity but if this political thing religious thing social views association activities individual group association corporation business or partnership 
has something to do with the commission of a crime of a certain individual that should be considered off. Yeah? So that should be considered and take into consideration that should take part of your gathering information and or data. Okay? Third, no information which has been obtained in violation of any applicable national, local law, or ordinance shall be included in any criminal intelligence system. So as plus, uh, sir, ano tong criminal intelligence system? The criminal intelligence system really will not be accessed by the normal individual, by those plain individual like us. Diba? We don't have actually, uh, kining, we don't have this uh, official business with the law enforcement intelligence agency na kung saan kinakailangan natin mag-obtain ng mga information na ganito or meron tayong access. No, we don't have. Sino lang merong access dito is intergovernmental agencies. Itong pinagsasabi nating criminal intelligence system. As much as possible, since the criminal intelligence system will still be accessible by the executive branch of the government, it should not be the case that you are going to obtain an information that somehow inviolable to the rights of privacy of an individual. Okay? As much as possible, okay? As much as possible, the information and or data that should be indicated or will be inputted in the criminal intelligence system has already conforming or following di ba? the applicable national, local law, or ordinances, which somehow in connection with the rights of a suspect and or the accused. Because otherwise, foul play yon. As much as possible, you are going only to take that or to uh, preserve that for the means or to aid for your further operation and or investigation, but not to the extent really to expose that or to uh, uh, to make use of that as an evidence for future court uh, kanang court prosecution. The fourth one is intelligence information shall be disseminated. Again, remember the word only. Shall be disseminated only where there is a need to know or right to know the data and the performance of the law enforcement activity. Pinag-usapan na natin ito kanina. Okay? Na kinakailangan you are only going to disseminate the information and or data for those individual who are authorized to possess. Diba? So, dito lang na niyo mo ihatag. So, as much as possible, you should not compromise the quality and the sensitivity of the value of intelligence report. Next, the fifth one. Intelligence information shall be disseminated again only to other law enforcement authorities who shall agree to follow procedures regarding data entry. So this is the thing that I failed to mention a while back dito sa dissemination uh, na kung saan you are not allowed to uh, disseminate. And like for example, the PNP. The PNP is helping out diba, to aid the operation of the NBI or the other law enforcement agency for that matter. But whenever these particular liaison agencies to whom they are asking for a collaboration and cooperation with the PNP, if they are not going to follow the procedures regarding the data entry, maintenance, and security, they will not provide it such, even though they are in the position to be given with the data collected. Okay. So if they are not going to follow and abide with the protocols, they will not be given with that. Okay. Next. Six. Agencies maintaining criminal intelligence data shall adopt administrative, technical, and physical safeguards, okay, including audit trail, to ensure against unauthorized access and against intentional or unintentional damage. So this is very, uh, this is for the very purpose of tracking or knowing the trail as to who are individual have an access to that, the number of personnel are authorized to have an access in order for them also to, uh, to, to pinpoint whosoever uh, liabilities should take account to. Okay? So a written record indicating who has been given data, reason for release and date of each dissemination outside the agency is to be kept. Ibig sabihin, kinakailangan tong procedure na ito just because at the end of the day, uh, talking about the compromisation of the data, you knew already to whom you are going to direct the, the concerns and to whom you are going to, uh, to address such issue and or the problem. 
Next one, procedures shall be adapted to assure that all information which is retained has relevancy and importance. Ibig sabihin, okay, ibig sabihin, the information to be retained and to be retained and to be stored is that has relevancy with the current issue, with the current situation and has an importance and bearing with the current issues. So as much as possible, if don't have relevancy to the current issue, it must not be then uh, it must be then retained, therefore, by following the procedure that has been adopted. Such procedures shall be provided for the periodic review of data and the destruction of any information. Be reminded that for a period of two years, it must be reviewed and validated before it can be utilized or disseminated. So meaning to say, from time to time within two years of review, so if this will be subject for final dissemination and final utilization of the data, so again, if wala na siya gamit, pwede na nga i what dispose ang uh, information or uh, kanang rather intelligence uh, data or intelligence report. Next thing, if automated equipment for use in connection with a criminal intelligence system is to be obtained with funds under the grant. So meaning to say, uh, as if only, okay, if only automated equipment to be used in connection with the criminal intelligence system is being granted and that is the time it will be given fund, it will be supported. Uh, as such, if not be granted and not determined that is not, uh, that is possible and already passed and surpass the protocols and procedures na ginasita, therefore it should be given a fund and a budget for them to pursue. But if not, they will not pursue to that since it is not following the procedures and the protocols. So law enforcement agency shall be notified prior to the initiation of formal information exchange procedures with the state, regional, or other information systems not indicated in the grant documents as initially approved at time of award. So meaning to say law enforcement agency, kinakailangan silang notify as to giving or exchange of information as to the procedure with a state or regional na kung saan ito yung pinag-usapan pinag natin or discuss a while back that before the, the data or intelligence be disseminated, make it sure that there is a prior uh, con communication. This is actually one of the, uh, this is, these are actually uh, the process and procedures uh, applied by the intelligence agencies also in the Philippines. Huh? Uh, na kung saan being observed with the NICA, with the AFP intelligence uh, unit, the PNP, and also the Anti-Terrorism Council under the IRA 9372. Uh, now we're in, they should to communicate the liaison uh, agencies so that they will be able to come up with the uh, uh, legal uh, exchange of data and or information with the proper uh, following, with the following uh, procedures and or kining protocols because otherwise this will not be initiated and this will not be negotiated with the other agencies intelligence report okay next is uh, assurances shall be made that there will be no purchase or use in the course of the project of any electronic mechanical or other device for surveillance purposes that is in violation of the provision of the RE4200 or the anti wiretapping law in which or any other state statute related to wiretapping and surveillance. Ibig sabihin, there will be an assurance, okay, before granting, okay, before granting or allowing an agent, okay, this is upon the, this is upon the request of the intelligence unit huh, to the court of having the, having the consent or having the authority to conduct surveillance by means of wiretapping because as such, if they will not abide and follow as to acquiring first the notice and grant coming from the court as to initiating the uh, initiating the wiretapping means or method of gathering data, foul play yon. So they should not pursue to that. If granted, they will pursue. If not, they will not pursue. Okay, the next one is assurances shall be made that there shall be no harassment or interference with any lawful political activities as part of the intelligence operation. So of course, naman po, 
it should not uh, it should not encroach other activities politically and or civil activities for that matter because otherwise it will be compromised but but if it has something to do with the political issues which the state security is at stake and the state policies is at stake that is the time that the political perspective will be penetrated and will be uh, will be will be taking into account for the sole purpose of state security okay the last one sanctions of course sanctions shall be adapted to control and authorize access the sanctions that we are talking about here is the sanction as the bylaws the protocols and the procedures of the intelligence unit or the private intelligence organization for that matter and on the other perspective naman in the statute of the state we are talking about as to the procurement of data and or information that should always conform to the state or uh, to the statute of the state like for example uh, RA4200 uh, and also uh, Commonwealth Act 616 diba so basin pa lang ha, na conduct mo na siyang spionage activity wala lang kakabalo and then diba na divulge sa ila or the the law on anti privacy act of 2012 Diba? So, kana sila nga mga uh, consideration ang lantawan ani that there must be sanctioned to be sanctioned there too to a particular violator. And of course, utilization, as to the utilization or disclosure of information contained in the system. Okay. So, these are the procedures and processes in intelligence operation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are you still there? Gaganawa pa ba mo dira class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Ang tubig dira na wala mo. Laban, sir. Wala pa na human atong discussion. Ayaw mo pagsalamat dia. So, sinto ko ba? Wait for a while. This is the last Do. okay scope of Laban, the US sir. discussion. Gamay sa klas, murag kinalan ko gasolina. Chi! Let us resume. Okay. So we are down to last topic. The importance, principles, and components of national security. Okay. Let's proceed. So the importance of national security. Okay. Let us differentiate and give the two perspectives, which is the privacy of a particular individual and the national and the privacy of the national security. Okay, so privacy is important to keep your information to yourself and national class. This, uh, this particular ano, uh, importance of national security, this was under the procedure of the NICA or the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, which has inter interconnected and interrelated with the other intelligence units of the law enforcement agencies of the Philippines. So as to the introductory part of the importance of national security of as stated, uh, as stated under the procedure and protocol of the national intelligence coordinating agencies that privacy is important to keep your information to yourself and national security helps the nation keeps its sanity in regards to safety. Meaning to say, you as an intelligence officer and intelligent agent, you should look into consideration the difference between the privacy of an individual and the national security of the state. If ever the data and or information of a particular individual is of great help in securing the national security, diba? as much as the intelligence work as concerned, 
in maintaining the peace and order of the national security, the privacy of individual will be encroached for the sake of the security or national security. But as much as possible, okay, you as the intelligence officer for that matter, you should take into account by following the procedures and protocols set forth by the intelligence agencies. Okay? So, next thing is that our national security and national armed forces are the most vital and should be kept important. So, national security really lowers the risk of the terrorist events like 9-11 attack. Yeah, so, September 9 nga attack sa, uh, sa US. So, this is one of the function of the NICA here, the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency. So, let's proceed with our main topics. So, we have here the principles and components of national security. Okay. There are seven actually elements of our national security and or components that amplify the national interest. So meaning to say, under the consideration of the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, before they will be able to carry out the objectives and able to address their goals in looking into the security of the state is that they, are, they took into consideration these following elements and or components as to the social, uh, I mean psychosocial aspects of national security such as people's per perceptions or beliefs, social norms, and character that affects the appreciation of the government's policies and programs. And these are first, we have socio-political stability. So when we see socio-political stability, really it talks about the relationship between the society between between the society which composed of plain individual or normal individual uh, to the relation to their relationship to the political arena diba? the relationship to the political events and activities of those who are who, who are holding a key position in the politics and or in the government okay the main purpose of which is that it is to achieve peace and harmony among all filipinos regardless of creed ethnic or region and social status Meaning to say, there's no way for you to politicize the social perspective of an individual in order for you just to take advantage on the possible information that you could take from that uh, person. The government and the people must engage in nation building under the rule of law, constitutional democracy, and the full respect for human rights. So meaning, dining a state palang daan sa nika, socio-political stability, it reminding the intelligence officer and or agents that they should look into the consideration pertaining to the socio-political stability, the relationship of those people in the community towards the political perspective of those who are in the position. Diba? As to maintain, as, as to make the stability intact in the community and or in the society. At the same time, the government is accountable to the people and as such must ensure socio-political stability through good governance. Diba? So it must be the government who should look into uh, the welfare of its people, focusing on its purpose and outcomes for its citizenry. And uh, the second one is we have territorial integrity here. Okay. In the territorial integrity, we are not only talking here about as if the armed forces in terms of katihan or land in the fluvial in water and of course in the aerial in the airspace na kung saan they are going to protect it from uh, kining ginatawag na to kining isawag, domestic issues or domestic security issues but also it tackles up the foreign issues that would somehow envision against the territory of the Philippines. So as much as possible, they should always look into the government's policy, the foreign policy in terms of relationship. Okay. So this means that the territory of the country is intact and under the effective control of the government. And this is actually what our government is uh, doing today. Despite of the challenges and the issues throwing against the government by the opponents, party or the rival party na kung saan talagang pinipilit nila na para bang why is it that the opponents were actually forcing the government to fight back the China 
Eh, unang-una, meron tayong pinag sasabi ngayon dito, territorial integrity. Paano nga ba natin dinidepensahan yung territory natin to be uh, not to be envisioned with the other countries or other kining kuan, kining subversive country like China, di ba? So the media or other kanang opposition is really forcing the government to fight back the China to reclaim the island which is not which is actually not happening to be the Philippines uh, island. This is actually still uh, claimed by the other countries because unang una is wala na na ato that is out of the EEZ. Other than ha, other than most especially the katong bago nga isyo karun which is not part of the uh, EEZ of the Philippine territory. So that is the very purpose of the territorial integrity as much as possible. The harmony or the relationship between two countries, the Philippines and the other countries, must be intact in order not to put the lives of the Filipino people in danger. And the territorial integrity will still be intact. So, kanos alang ni nga mo, kining aggressive ang atuang aerial armies, fluvial armies and land armies, is whenever the enemies already penetrated uh, the fluvial uh, territory or fluvial kining military territory. So pag sinabing military territory, fluvial, that is aerial uh, military space. Pag sinabing aerial military space, this is the space now where uh, the defense uh, defense uh, kining sa defense stat of the armed forces of the Philippines is already treated. Why? Ano man, gipinitreat naman ang ilang area of coverage na kung saan mauna ni ang pinaka-maximum nila nga area nga ilang ginaprotektahan na kung saan ipinitreat pagyod sa uh, subversive country and or the enemy. Once nga maabot na sila ng uh, military airspace nga pinaka-maximum space of the air nga ilang ginaprotektahan that is very offensive na sa parts ato ha and kinahanglan na sila nga mo react towards that action from the subversive uh, organization or country for that matter. So let's move on. This includes the preservation of our exclusive economic zone. So kaganina, as much as possible, the government of the Philippines should not entertain those mga unhealthy uh, issues against sila para lang mo fight back those mga powerful countries. Economic solidarity. So this is one also of the uh, intelligence consideration that should be taken into consideration by the government. And this is what the government is doing now. Diba? So economic solidarity. So collectively pursue and build the economy to be strong, capable of supporting national endeavors as much as possible. Uh, the the kining, na, sensitive data and issues pertaining to economic status of the Philippines should not be possessed by the subversive country because as such, this will be used by the subversive country in order to what immobilize our country by not supporting us just because of the economic status nga ito ang uh, face nowadays. Like for example, let me take into consideration where actually it is a movie but this actually happening before between the Russia and the US. We're in the economic solidarity of uh, relationship between the China, I mean the US and the Russia were being threatened. It is where the it is when the private corporation and organization, business corporation of the Russia actually dumping hidden accounts against the US, in which the US cannot cope up with the up price or the fast rise or kanang uh, fast appreciation of the of the hidden accounts or undetermined accounts coming from the Russia. So we're in a declare ang US of economic war against uh, Russia just because of the hidden agenda of the Russia. So what is the main purpose there is that the Russia wanted to immobilize the US by uh, manip uh, by monopolying the the stagana the oil and crude in the in the Middle East. Okay, so ilang na ang na itabo ato they are dumping accounts, hidden accounts to the US, so that if what will happen then magkabagsak ang kining kwan economic status of the US and the Russia and other economic status of the uh, kining Middle East is that kinsa ang makarecover, ang makarecover lang ana the the very approach and concept of that. Uh, hidden agenda is that the one who will recover is the the 
uh, the Middle East countries and also the Russia. And the one who will not recover is the US. So may na threaten ang US just because of the economic war declared by them against the uh, Russian government. So economic solidarity must be maintained, therefore, by the government. So therefore, as much as possible, that is why the government, especially the president himself, personally visited other countries uh, having the conversation and having a uh, negotiation pertaining to economic solidarity in order to support the possible kining, uh, businesses in our countries to boom our economic status. We have also ecological balance, okay, national survival risk upon the effects of the what uh, conservation of our natural resources. So we back 2017, going straight forward 2018, it is the uh, big issue pertaining to uh, kining, sorry, mga miners in the Philippines wherein uh, this is one also of the intelligence effort conducted by the, by the Armed Forces of the Philippines since the personnel of the Armed Forces of the Philippines has actual engagement in the field sa mountainous area. Uh, na kung saan they provided an information pertaining to not following the procedures and protocols set by the government towards these mga miners, mga foreign miners. So ang say na hitabo dira, wala nila, wala nila na maintain ang ecological balance. That is why uh, the government withdraws their agreement with the foreign miners even if it costs the, the economic status of the Philippines rather than uh, by letting the ecological or the environmental be affected with this uh, kining one, kining, and by not following the protocols by these miners. Next, cultural cohesiveness. So it implies that the Filipinos have shown their collective sense of value to the principles of freedom and human dignity of a person. So, so this also means that our people is imbued by a common set of values and beliefs handed down by their forebears. So as much as possible in cultural cohesiveness, kanisha uh, usan niya ka issues na wherein atay mga uh, minorities, pe minority people, and kung saan they actually exercising the uh, justice system as to uh, prosecution of crime. But somehow they are being neglected and be disregarded and subject for any uh, encroachment of rights. And uh, kung saan they are not the, the agents and or some of the intelligence officers were not actually uh, following the protocol as to uh, recognizing the rights of this uh, cultural minorities individual. Moral spiritual consensus, so people must be propelled by the national vision inspired and manifested in words and deeds. So the primordial element for our national survival is national unity. So moral spiritual consensus, peace and harmony. Okay, so this pertains really to the relationships of the country pertaining to the national security and its relationship with the ASEAN countries or the neighboring countries in the ASEAN. Okay, so as much as possible, the peace and harmony uh, must be intact in terms of negotiating with the member countries of the ASEAN. So there are 10, diba? So nai naka-add isa, nai naka-add isa bago lang, so mura siyang 11 na tanan. But as to the original 10 lang siya, ang recognizable as a member of the ASEAN countries. So as much as possible, that is, ya, that is why natin ginatawag ang ASEAN Convention. So ASEAN poll, mga ni diri ang pinaka-importante ng participation of the Philippines by virtual participation of the chief of the Philippine National Police in participation with the Convention of ASEAN poll. ASEAN poll, uh, it stands for Association of Southeast Asian Chiefs of Police na kung saan pag-usapan nila ang mga uh, national security, the threats and the possible uh, kining, ng, uh, kining vulnerabilities of the no neighboring countries, what would be the possible course of action to support their neighboring countries, those least countries na kung saan unable to, unable to completely defend themselves from any invasions or threat from the bullying countries such as China di ba? and or the Russia. So those are the 
primordial responsibility under the uh, harmony. Are you still with me, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nangawala yes, na ang uban ba? Uy! Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes. Oh, sa to? All yes, congratulations, sir. criminologists. God bless you. you all. Claim that title. You are already criminologists. Okay? So, that concludes my discussion.